of the chains, Ron. They don't want to be back in third and eight, third and nine. They've used the passing game to get some short yardage, but they've got to be able to run the football. And their quarterback, Mike White, the senior from Pembroke Pines, Florida, spent some time at South Florida, number one in the FBS in pass efficiency, number two in completion percentage. White's going to put it up. Here comes the pressure. He's not afraid to stand in there, takes a hit, lets it go, incomplete. Oh, I want to welcome those of you who are watching a very good Patriot game lead. The Ford Fordham Rams beating Lehigh the final 45-35, along with Keith Moreland, Matty Morris, I'm Ron Thulin. Good to have you here in Bowling Green, Kentucky for Western Kentucky and FAU. Very important game in Conference USA. Jakari Moses on the carry, picks up four on the play. And a good push right there, makes it a very manageable third down. It's interesting on the, the first pass play of the ball game, or the first play of the game, it, a really good coverage. It was a two deep zone, took away the vertical passing game. This is a big down early, no three and out. They're 45% on the season on third down. Powder goes in motion. White will put it up. Four-man rush. Just dumps the short pass over the middle. It's going to be in incomplete. It looked like Rashad Smith came up with the interception. Wasn't able to put his hands around it. He's trying to drop it over the middle. In the hands. Boy, those tip balls are the ones that are really tough. And Oh, that would have been an outstanding play. Just could not come down with it with Smith. Had his hands on it, couldn't come away with it. Jalen Young, back to receive the kick. Jake Collins will kick it away from his 25-yard line. Little bit of pressure, almost blocked. Off the side of his foot, this will not be a good kick. Rolls out of bounds at about the 32-yard line. And one thing you don't want to do is give them great field position. Now we get a chance to see Lane Kiffin's offense, which is kind of morphing into their own offense now. Well, I think he's right. Talking to Lane Kiffin, this is our third game with FAU. Now the penalty is going to go against Reggie Bain of FAU. He'll back him up five yards. But we've watched this offense, Keith Morph. And last night I asked him about it. I said, you know, it's kind of like a combination of Alabama, what you did at USC, and also Baylor. Yeah, just getting comfortable. Uh, Kendall Browse and, and Lane Kiffin together, both good offensive minds, and they're getting the right feel for how they want to call the game. That's what they do a lot of is Willie Wright. That is considered a pass, believe it or not. So that'll be Willie Wright's 22nd reception. Here it is again. Well, Picked he just went quickly right across the middle. It's just a tap. Quarterback just Driscoll just taps it out in front. Here they go again. And that's one thing Lane Kiffin says. We've got to throw the ball downfield a little bit more. Here's Singletary. This is where he's dangerous. Has great anticipation, looks for the big hit, gets to the 25. He's going to lose five on the play. I'll tell you, when Singletary gets going. Yeah, but Wiggins blew this up, Ron, right at the beginning, right here. Wiggins in the backfield, does a nice job of bouncing it out. Didn't make the play, but look at the pursuit. Hilltoppers see those five jerseys all around the football. We've got a After penalty. Play, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense, number 15. 15 penalized half the distance to the goal. It will be third down. That is number 15's first unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Oh, that's Cameron Solomon, the senior from Jacksonville, Florida. Now they're back way up. They've got to get to the 41 yard line for the first down. Uh, some kind of bubble screen here. They will not try to get vertical. Protect the football. Empty the backfield, five wide receiver set. Driscoll straight drop. 
just goes underneath to Willie Wright on the coverage incomplete. And they'll have to kick it away in Western Kentucky. And defensive coordinator Clayton White has to be pretty pleased with that opening effort. Well, both teams three and out. You see nerves by both quarterbacks, Ron. They've had open receivers. That ball behind him right there. We saw it on the other side from, Wa from White. So, you know, it's one of those things. Just get into the flow of the game. Ryan Rickle standing in his own end zone. Kicking with the wind. And it's a beauty. The carry is fan has to back up to the 40. Up the middle, tripped up at the 45. They'll mark him down to the 46. That's where Western Kentucky will take over their second possession of the ball game. We are in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Very big game in Conference USA East, and we are scoreless. Ah, the imagination with the W and the KU. You've got Lane Kiffin here, and he's playing your, your times. There's a good look at head coach Mike Sanford. And, you know, think about it. About a month ago, this team was one and two. They were struggling. Yeah. After the UTEP game, Mike telling us yesterday, they reevaluated everything. They're not afraid to make changes when they see things are not going well. White. Throws, pass complete, first down inside the 35-yard line to Quinn Jernigan, coming off his best game of the year last week. Well, he did a really nice job finding the soft spot in the zone and watching folks use his hands right there. Catch it out in front, turns up field, gets the first down into part of Atlantic territory. Well, he picked up 19 on the play. Try to go with just a little bit of a run with Quentin Baker. Baker, the sophomore out of Ashland, Kentucky. He's had some good runs this season, and he's finally healthy. Here comes, up two. Here comes the hurry up now on the other side. Baker, the only one in the backfield. The pass underneath the defense gets inside the 30 to the 28. Jaquiz Sloan, his seventh reception, the freshman out of Atlanta. Picked up four. Uh, go to the sideline here. Really nice job by Sloan sliding in, making sure he secured the football. You know, there are times when receivers try to make a play instead of catch the ball, make it a third yeah. and short. You know, into this breeze, this is four down territory going this direction. There's, there is a really nice breeze right to left on your screen. So I would think this might be a run. Well, the offensive coordinator, Junior Adams, has challenged his wide receivers to be playmakers. Hit as he's thrown, pass complete inside the five-yard line. How did Eccles Looper even come up with that ball? Well, that's a great catch, but this is all created. You got to do other things other than run the football. That's a, that's a great job picking up the blitz, stepping up, doing it. And then stopped right at the line of scrimmage is Furby. DeAndre Furby, the sophomore from Glasgow, Kentucky, his first carry. Kind of the downhill guy they like. I want to go back, though, to, to what Cameron Eccles Looper did. He was only in training camp about two weeks. Well, he made a great adjustment to the football in the air. It's in, you know, sometimes as a, a receiver, you, you've got to make an adjustment to where the football is. He did a nice job of getting to the football. Red zone's been a problem, though. He's a graduate transfer. Again, the run, nothing to it. Moses stuffed. Red zone 72% on the season for Western Kentucky. Just get overmatched right here. Push. When the defense gets penetration in red zone, you have trouble running the football. They're going to have to throw it here, see if they don't spread it out. You see 72.4 in the red zone. You, you got to be much better than oh, that. Oh, yeah. Run. Now they're one for two on third down so far this afternoon. Cameron Eccles Looper, bottom of your screen. Third down and goal from about the five. White looks for Cameron Eccles. Looper got him. Touchdown. Just an outstanding route. Sold it to the outside like he was going to the fade in the corner and just peeled off right at the end line, right across the goal line. Football was right on time from White. Seven plays, 53 yards, took him two minutes and 51 seconds. Two big catches by Cameron Eccles Looper, his second touchdown reception of the season. And the extra point by Nuss. 
And he is 23 of 23. The graduate transfer out of Ennis, Texas, whose head football coach was Graham Harrell, the offensive coordinator at North Texas's father. Eccles Looper, outstanding catch early, but the important part of this was, this is just an outstanding route. He sold the deep fade into the corner, and then he just bites it off right here, right at the goal line. Excellent route as a defensive back, an ex-defensive back. What he, you just see him sell it to the back. You turn your back to the quarterback. You never know he's going to cut it off. Great pitch and catch for the touchdown. The first time that FAU has trailed during their three game win streak. But this is an offense, don't forget, that put up over 800 yards last week. Very, very powerful. Kicking against the wind. It's going to be Willie Wright. Over the 20. Gets a couple of blocks, takes a big hit, but does get up to the 30. A return of 23 yards for Willie Wright. Ron, you, you just mentioned it. You've been on such a roll. You've been ahead in every ball game. You've just been grinding it out. Now, all of a sudden, your offense is going to, they can't afford a three and out here. Yeah. Let this crowd get into it, give up great field position. They need to establish. I would think right here, you would see them get into a hurry up where they really get into NASCAR fast, where they're coming to the line of scrimmage, may get two or three plays off in 40 seconds. Uh, one thing that Lane Kiffin was telling us yesterday, we cannot allow WKU to stay in this football game. He says, we've got to pick up the pace fast. Driscoll fakes the pitch. That'll be good for the first down. Willie Wright picks up 11 on the play. Here they come right back to the line of scrimmage, and they're ready to go. They are not just fast. They can alter the tempo, but they're not afraid to put the pedal down. They average about 76 yards a game, or 76 plays a game. The pitch, again, a little run by Singletary. Baby Bush, Lane Kiffin calls him. Obviously, he coached Reggie Bush at USC. You can see the numbers on him. Closing in on another 1,000-yard season. He was the first FAU freshman to reach that 1,000-yard mark. Singletary bangs his way. That'll be close to the first down of the 49-yard line. That's what he does for me. He oh, finishes yeah. every run. They've got three running backs, all average over six yards a carry. Singletary again. Same play. They, they might go three times in a row with it and get you to, as a defense, they start to get you, bringing you in, bringing you in, then a bubble screen, and then they get those safeties to come up. They'll go down the field. Two straight games, this offense has scored better than 50 points. They can score quickly. Outstanding rushing team, ninth best in the FBS. Singletary, very patient runner. You'll see him dancing around a lot, but he always is able to get three or four on first down. You know, those this front four for the Hilltoppers, a lot of pressure on them in this ball game. They really got to stand up in that inside run. This time outstanding defense. That's going to be a loss of about two on the play. Bertram leads the charge coming from that linebacker spot, the senior out of Louisville. Well, he did step up. Yeah. That's, how you, that's how you feel the hole right there. Now, I don't see Western Kentucky coming after him here, Ron. I think they'll lay back and play base defense. Well, one of the things Western Kentucky was saying is we can't blitz these guys. They'll burn us. Driscoll to Buddy Howe. He is stacked up after he crosses the 45, gets to the 44. That'll be about four yards short of the first, and multiple penalty flags are thrown. Now this puts gray hairs on the coach right oh, here. Oh, my. Got the stop. I think this is going to go against the Hilltoppers. Justin Elliott, our referee today. Not sure exactly what it was. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct. Number seven, defense. It's a 15-yard penalty added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. Well, Joe well, watch Brown. right at the end of this, Ron. Watch number seven, Joe Brown. There's no sense jumping in the bottle. He's already stopped. I mean, that's a little ticky-tacky to me. Yeah, I think but, it is too. But 
you know, still you've got to you got to know that the, the play is timing. It's over. The whistle's blowing. Joe Brown coming back from that hand injury. You saw the big club on his hand. He's got one of those soft casts. Now they fake it. Driscoll has some time. Dumps it off to Singletary inside the 20 yard line and able to scamper down to about the 18. And he picks up about so about 10 on the play. Well, it's a nightmare for you to get him out in one on one as a defender. And they quickly go back to the line. Singletary straight ahead. The pile pushes forward down to about the 13 yard line. That'll be a pickup of six. Watch this running here. This is yards after contact. He gets right to the line of scrimmage and then there's contact. He gets four more after contact and a first down. And you can see the red zone numbers the last three games 19 for 19. Pitch it back, Singletary bouncing off tackles. Good job defensively by the men in red. Got to set the corner. And you get a, a pitch sweep. Your job, no matter if you're the corner, the safety, you got to set the corner. And that's exactly what the Hilltoppers did there. Great pursuit from the inside. Running the football in the red zone turns into touchdowns. Second down, they need to get down to about the three yard line. Cameron Solomon at the bottom of your screen. Driscoll rolls, throws, tough play. Could have been picked off, almost intercepted. You could see that that was headed right to somebody in red. That was a great play by Johnson. Well, I tell you what, he, he cuts in front of it, sees it the whole way. Oh, he would like to have that back. He, he had it in his hands and trying to put it into his chest. That's points right there, taking him off the board. Third down and 10. Driscoll dumps it to Singletary. Decided to stop instead of keep going, and that may have cost him some yards. He got down to the 10. That's going to bring the field goal unit out for Western Kentucky. Oh, that's outstanding defense, though, so Ron. You get down, first down at the 13, and you force a field goal. That's just great defense. Swarm the football. Had a chance for a turnover, but they're going to hold him to a field goal attempt. This will be Greg Joseph attempting the 29-yard field goal. He's 8 of 9 out of the year. His only miss came from 56 yards out. Ryan Rickle is the holder. And he is 9 of 10 on the season. So they don't answer with a touchdown, but they do get three. Western Kentucky leads, and they'll be getting the ball back when we return. Western Kentucky has won the last two meetings between these two teams. They are leading now 7 to 3, 534 left in the first. For the most comprehensive team by team coverage across the NFL, join Dave Ross and two time Super Bowl champion Brian McFadden for the most timely news and in depth analysis on Inside the League. Weekdays at 4 p.m. only on WatchStadium.com. Hey, we'd like to wish our best to. Max Starks normally sitting beside us nor Max feeling a little bit under the weather and wasn't able to come to the game Max we hope you uh, obviously get better and because you missed a game you owe me dinner <laughs> <laughs> the sympathetic heart just goes out the window you know doesn't take much seriously Max get better my friend Towner will down it five yards deep and Western Kentucky will take over at the 25. Well, you look at the scenario of what took place. Uh, the 15-yard penalty when they had them stopped, allowed them to get down in the red zone, and then they had the opportunity, did the Hilltoppers for the pick, had it in their hands, ended up giving up points. Now they need to come back offensively and answer here going into the breeze. Well, Junior Adams' offensive coordinator spent a lot of time with us yesterday, and he and Mike were telling us they've really challenged the offense. They won four-plus yards on first down. He said, it is an absolute must we stay ahead of the chains against this potent offense, believe it or not, of FAU. Yeah, you stay on the field. Sometimes the best defense is your offense. White four of six already, and a touchdown throwing the football. Just the simple pitch back. Baker, Quinton Baker was the number two rusher last season, comes in averaging just over, or just about four yards a carry. Picked up two. Uh, 
They bring four on the blitz. Pass thrown. Picked off at the 40-yard line. Andrew Sorrell with the interception, his third of his career, first this year. Ball was just overthrown. It was. He, he felt the pressure right here. You can see the blitz in his face. And this, this ball just gets behind him. Might have got a piece of it. See Brown coming right up the middle. Excuse me, Smith coming right at him. He tried to sidestep it. Ball was tipped great. Vic. That's exactly what the doctor ordered right there. You can see the offense sort of stunned right there. Everybody's setting yeah. on the field. It was sort of one of those scenarios where you look at it and go, did that just happen? Now you got sudden change defense. 13th team interception. In talking to Western Kentucky coaches, the only thing they can say about the DBs of FAU, they've got ball skills. Now let's see if they have a quick strike offense with Kendall Browse, their offensive coordinator. Keeper, nothing doing. Driscoll stacked up. He turned into quite a runner. We saw him in the ODU game. Yeah, he, can, he can run the football, but he's also intelligent. You see him right there. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not taking a big hit. He went to the ground. That was a smart play. Lost maybe a foot. This time he'll put it up. Looking deep down near side. Throws it up for grabs. Ball is tipped. Looking for Willie Wright, I believe. He was trying to get the ball down. There were two receivers right in the area because the ball drifted on Driscoll. He was trying to throw that more in the middle of the field. This breeze, it's times with the wind behind you, and the ball has a tendency yeah. to drift, and that ball drifted away on him. He brought two receivers together and three defenders. Boy, this is this is the biggest play so far in the ball game right now. Yeah, well, they're only one of four on third down so far this afternoon. They need more than 10 yards for the first. They look over, no playbook for FAU. They use hand signals. Driscoll looks deep down the middle for right. Pass knocked away. Good job defensively. Jawan Gardner really came up from the safety position. He actually was double coverage. Yeah, no doubt. He, he, he threw that into double coverage. Uh, Walker did a nice job reacting to the football as well. You know, they were in cover three, Ron. They, they were playing man underneath. And then three deep safeties down the field and sort of forced the issue right there. Well, that's good defense, though, after the sudden change. Well, DeCorian, DeCorian Darden, the, the sophomore out of Russellville, Kentucky, was also in on that play. Punter goes down, no penalty flag thrown. Did that hit? I think it may have hit Western Kentucky. Now they're saying it's down. No, they're saying it, but ball belongs to FAU. It did get a hilltopper. Can't advance that after it's been touched, but it's a live football, and it'll be wow. It'll be Al's football inside the five. Just a complete metal mistake. Well, that, that, well we have an official coming back saying, for seven, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. There. There was roughing on the kicker, and that was a late, late flag. Yeah, it, it, it didn't, it didn't it come didn't, out after he got hit. It didn't come down, Ron. You, you're absolutely right. But the interesting thing to me is watch the end of this. You'll see as he comes in, just clips him right there. You know, you get in the legs, that's going to be roughing. Yeah. But the interesting part of this, I believe this football was touched by Hilltopper inside the five-yard line. You can't advance that. They... The house picked it up and took it into the end zone, but you can't move it from that spot. I believe this ball's going to be down inside the five. Now well, they're going to have to sort this out, and here's the official word. After being legally touched, it will be FAU ball at the eight-yard line. The foul for roughing the kicker is declined. First down, FAU. Well, that's what I thought should have happened. Oh, there's no doubt. But, I, you know, once... I saw the kicker go down, and I didn't see anybody pull the flag. They did. You you look down the other end, and and Nixon was just in the way right there. The ball took yeah. an odd hop. You know, when your guy's gonna, he's got a a term, you know, whatever it is to get away from the football. He didn't hear it. He was too close to it. Yeah. Huge break. And now you put your defense with her back against the wall. FAU trying to go two for two inside the red zone today. Singletary doing a nice job stacking him up. 
picks up maybe two finally pushed back you got to give kudos to that front four of Western Kentucky because they lost defensive tackle Evan Sainer season ending injury coaches called him a monster on the inside yeah, now they're I, missing him I felt like that was one of the keys to the game and that front four right now is definitely holding up now they've held Singletary to about two yards of carry the little pitch this is what they do a lot of and it's nothing going obviously Gardner saw it on tape and so did the rest of the Western Kentucky team well that's why you go to the film room during the week is definitely read this you come from your safety position he saw this play develop from the beginning DeAndre McNeil getting stacked up and it's third down give it to Singletary bounces to the outside touchdown well, this is just an outstanding run folks you would think passing situation they went to the draw and then watch Singletary here watch his cut plants that right foot he looks like he's going to the right plants his right foot and boy once it happens there hard to bring him down one on one that is his 27th career rushing touchdown that ties the legendary Alfred Morris for number one at FAU history Morris of course now a member of the Dallas Cowboys what an accomplishment Devin Singletary owns just about every record now extra point is good and he's only a sophomore a little bit different weather than Boca but the fans have come up here and they've seen Devin Singletary motor is his nickname well he did motor right here now watch this right here this is the important part just got the nose for the end zone one guy's not going to bring him down especially up around his shoulders extremely strong upper body great forward lean and into the end zone and boy, I tell you what mistakes so far oh yeah have cost the Hilltoppers. Oh, well, he already set the FAU record for touchdown in a season. Now ties the career record for touchdowns. Number one in the FBS in rushing touchdowns with 15 now for Devin Singletary. Now you have to wonder mentally, what's that do to Western Kentucky? Not so much physically because they can still move the football, but mentally. Oh yeah, I don't think there's a question. It, it, they need to, they need to get going here. Uh, don't feel sorry for yourself. That's one of the things that teams do. For, sometimes they start to get in that scenario where they start feeling sorry for themselves. Crowder and Eccles Looper, and they'll take the knee again. Keith mentioned it. It's been mistakes for head coach Mike Sanford's team so far today. Well, there's it, all ten points, in my opinion, have come from it. They had him stop right here. It's going to force a punt. You have a 15-yard penalty, extends the drive. Then. You hold him to a field goal after that, then you have a roughing, but that's not as important as the fact is the guy got hit by the ball. And one of the guys, the, the gunner going downfield, didn't know where the football was. And the Owls took over at the eight yard line and put it in the end zone. Well, they only have five yards rushing so far in this ball game. I know they're a passing team. They only average about 89 yards a game running the football. But I think if you're Mike Sanford right now, you wouldn't mind running the football, taking some time off the clock problem is Western Kentucky still looking for that one running back that helps your cause ball is loose FAU's got it another mistake by Western Kentucky now they're gonna say that he that he was down and the ball caused the fumble but boy it sure looked like he was not down when this ball came out we get a chance to see it again right here right away lowers his shoulder he's spinning that football right there. Oh, he may be down. You know, he may be down. I, I think he. Center of view. I don't. You know, you always got to go back to the call on the field, Ron. Yeah. And the call on the field was a fumble. But right here, as he's on the way down, ball might have been coming out as he was coming down. But is that knee down? We'll get a great opportunity from this view. Is his elbow or knee down before the football comes out? His knee's not going to be down, but this left elbow yeah, right there. Yeah, it is. I think he's down. Is there enough evidence to overturn it? My well, opinion, there is. Well, we got one of the best replay officials and Steve Barth just to our right in the booth. And he's going to take a long, hard look at it. Because he still has control there. And that's when he loses it right there. Yeah. And that elbow is the same as the knee. Yeah. Furby, the junior out of Smyrna, Tennessee. You know, you got it. There's other things that you're looking at here too. If they said, well, 
we're going to say he was down. You got to go back, find the exact point <laughs> that he was down it before the football came out. But this is a huge play in this game because all the momentum has swung to the outside of the field. Good look at Lane Kiffin in his first year. Last year, three teams embarrassed FAU, Middle Tennessee, ODU, and this Western Kentucky team. In the last three weeks, they've beaten Middle Tennessee, ODU. They're trying to get their third, what they were calling, revenge game. Here's another look right here. One more time as he's coming across here in slow motion. As you can see him spinning. Looks like he has control right there. Watch the left elbow for me. It hits the ground right there. The ball's still in his hands. I think, I think this ball, this is overturned. Now Lane Kiffin can only wait. The fans are calling it the lane train down in Boca. He has got so much excitement down there. And I'm telling you, I love his sense of humor. The whole tweet thing, when he landed yesterday, After review, he tweeted, oh, here we go. The ball carrier was down with possession at the 32-yard line. It'll be second down at the 32-yard line. Oh, you called it, but Lane, he texted, I'm back in Tennessee. He did it as a joke, and everybody goes, wait a minute, I'm on my way to Kentucky. But I was kidding him last night. I said, how many writers and these, you know, Twitter people, whoever they are, <laughs> went, oh, he's going to Tennessee. He's going to Tennessee. I think he has fun with it myself. I love his sense of humor. A good first down play. Got away with it, though. See if they run it again here. Furby stays in the backfield. White will give him another opportunity, puts two hands on the football. As he gets close to the 40, that'll be good for the first down as he picks up eight. Now there's a couple of reasons. I really liked your thought that you had, Ron. You want to run the football, get some running game going. The other part is you want to run this clock out and get the yeah. win behind you because this win is a factor. Two minutes and 37 seconds left to play in the opening quarter. It looked like they were playing press coverage. They backed off. Passes incomplete. And that is interesting because this is the number one secondary in Conference USA, one of the best in the conference. They already got their 13th interception on the season, fourth best in the FBS. You'll see them press. You'll see them back out. Chris Kiffin, the defensive coordinator, obviously the brother of Lane and son of Monty Kiffin, he's got a number of different combinations. Straight ahead running. First big run over the 50 by Moses. Boy, he, he picks was, up 10. He was, he had nobody behind him. He, all he saw was green in front of him right here. He just gets an ankle on him right there. Or I think he's got a chance to take that one to the house. They're the only FBS team that doesn't have a rush over 20 yards this year, Western Kentucky. White looks to put it up, throws it into the flat. Oh, my goodness. Got to keep your eyes on it, Chikari. Ah, we've got a little bit of chippiness there. So you got to be careful. You got to be smart in this game. You do. You do. You, you just got to gotta keep your head on, tied on. You just get to the outside. It's a lot of contact right there. I, I, <laughs> Cameron Looper, Eccles yes. Looper is the one who first made the hit. Yes, he did. On Aziz El Shire, who's really the emotional leader of this team. Second down and 10. White, quick pass, nothing doing. Red perfectly. That's how you read a pass. Tyler had no shot at coming up with that as Herb Miller, the former cornerback, now playing the nickelback slot, makes the stop. Well, I tell you what, uh, that's great recognition. That, again, that's the film room during the week. You see a formation, you see a snap. He reacted to it immediately. He's going to bring it up third and long. Protect the football here. We've already had a couple of miscues in this game. It's led to points. Western Kentucky, two of three on third down. We're inside of 125 to play here in the first. White, straight drop, throws underneath the coverage. Pass caught back to the original line of scrimmage. Is Eccles Looper, but he will be short of the first down by about six. Well, your defense has been able to stand up to this point. I think you got to punt this football away. Eccles Looper already with three catches today, including a touchdown reception. Miller will have to come out of the game here, Ronnie. He was down, timeout was called, so he'll have to come out of the game. He's standing, and here comes the medical team out to him. Got a little, little boozy on that play. 
That's Herb Miller, the junior out of Miramar, Florida. I'll tell you what, this is a physical sport. <laughs> yeah. Jake Collins set to kick it away, and one of the things the coaches were telling us yesterday, his placement has been outstanding this year. Jalen Young back at the 10 for FAU. Here comes the pressure. Almost a block. Kicker goes down. No flag. I would give that a five on the Academy Awards scale of acting. Well, you know what? I wouldn't go quite that high. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking Adam Sandler kind of movie, yes. right? You know? <laughs> I don't sure the Academy would accept the nomination. No. <laughs> well, I think that was a correct call by the officials. No doubt. And now Coach Kiffin's offense takes over again, looking for their first four-game win streak since 2013. Driscoll tries to keep it. Gets up over the 10, wisely steps out of bounds at the 11-yard line. That'll be a pickup of three on the play. That's a good read right there. You, you, you see that defense man collapsing down. Yeah. you got to pull that ball out. Singletary was going to be wrapped up for a loss. He is an outstanding game manager. Here's Buddy Howell up the middle for the first down. Up to the 25-yard line for the senior out of Coconut Grove, Florida. 14 yards on the carry. Well, they caught a great trap. Excellent blocking for those five guys up front. Just allowed him to find how to find that soft spot and then got into the second level. I like about Buddy Howell. He's only lost six yards on 69 carries this season. A little trick play. Out in front, Driscoll looking for somebody to block. Willie Wright gets another first down. They'll mark him out at the 41 yard line. And that's the way the first quarter will come to an end. A lot of mistakes, but some pretty exciting football so far. FAU riding a three game winning streak. Western Kentucky riding a four game winning streak. Who will continue it? Second quarter straight ahead. And of course, Halloween coming up in our Halloween spirit. We decided to give an homage to the mascot here at Western Kentucky. Florida Atlantic has already run 24 plays in that opening quarter. Lane Kiffin, his team is rolling. With more on Lane, here's Maddie. Now, Coach Kiffin is very active on social media, and here's one of his most recent tweets of his cute son, Knox, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm noticing the things that are behind him, which are actually little canvases, which each of, of are each of Florida Atlantic's opponents for this season. After a win, they have the entire sign, signed the one. So as you can see, the Bethune-Cookman one, the Middle Tennessee one, Old Dominion, and North Texas all have the signatures on them, still waiting to see for the upcoming games whether or not they'll be signing them after a win. Guys? <laughs> That is the cutest little boy it I've is. ever seen. What an adorable young kid. I'll tell you, he likes, he does like Twitter. And he could be in pretty good position because right now, Florida International is beating Marshall 38-22 with only three minutes in the fourth. Wow. So if that score holds up and FAU wins, FAU will be on top of the Western Conference standings after today. Western Kentucky, though, they obviously can throw a monkey wrench into things. First and 10, balls on the 41 yard line. Driscoll handing off. Buddy Howe. Nothing doing it. Now they really did a nice job. They showed everybody up, and then watch coming into your screen. You see those guys flying in. It was a late adjustment. And that's again, that's in the film room, something they saw. Look for a little play action here pretty soon. Try to get something big down the field. Well, Lane Kiffin is moving Willie Wright into the slot now, top of your screen. They get him to Howe. Howe needs one block, spins around, up to midfield. That'll be about a yard short of the first down. Sometimes defense get out leverage. And that's exactly what happened here. They just, there was no way to set the corner because of the leverage of the offensive alignment. Caleb Woods into the lineup, his first game. 
number four. They get the first down. Caleb Woods led the team in receptions last season with 68 receptions, was suspended the first part of this game, lost it, or first part of the season, lost his scholarship. Now he's a walk-on, but they reinstated him last week, and he's playing today. Looks like Buddy Howell is down. There's a look at Caleb Woods, a senior out of Jacksonville, Florida. Technically, he's considered a walk-on now. Well, he, he just puts so much pressure on the defense. If he can get everything in his mind right and everything else right, because, you know, he's 6'5", 200 pounds. Yeah. He's, you know, almost 6'5". He, he just puts so much pressure. It's hard to cover that guy, a guy like that. You don't want to leave these guys in the middle. This offensive line's really played well. Well, this would be a big loss because Buddy Howell Jr. has been outstanding for this team. 28 yards, five carries today. On the season, averaging almost seven yards a carry, and he's going to get up, which is good news. You know, I like reading this article earlier this week about Buddy Howell, and he says, we are now addicted to winning. This is a team that the last three years, they've been three and nine. Now they've already won more games than they had last season and the year before that and the year before that, and Howell says, we're addicted to it. Well, I tell you what, you can go the other way, too. It gets to where you're used to losing. That That's even, oh yeah. that, that part, you, you've got to find a way and understand as a team how to win. Well, they've got a first and 10. They are in Western Kentucky territory. Handed off Willie Wright. Picks up two. Good tackle, though. That's the way you stand somebody up. Well, Keith Green Wiggins. Uh, Green set the table, though. That when you have a safety that can read, see things, fly to the football, he set the corner right there. Mm. Made it a short gain to the outside. What's well, number nine flying to your screen right there? He's a the guy that turned him back to the inside. Well, here it is again. I see how Willie Wright got hurt. Right there. Yeah, he just kind of spun on that leg. Now they're going to take a look at Willie Wright. And with that, we'll take a break. Hopefully we'll have some news for you when we come back. They continue to work on Willie Wright. They're working on his left leg. Here's a look at it again, and you just said to me, it's not how he turns the tonnage that fell on him. Yeah, right here, he gets his body out of whack, and then watch all this weight. He's 500 pounds of tonnage coming down right on that left leg, sort of bent underneath him right there. Never want to see that, but you could tell him instantly knew that it was yeah. that left leg. Four touches, he's accounted for 33 yards so far in this football game. Second down and nine now for FAU. Not many passing yards. Patrisco wants to change that on this play. Going deep, far side. Pass almost intercepted. Yes, it is intercepted. Great job by DeAndre Ferris. His second career interception in first of the year. This is great ball skills. Driscoll tried to lay this up. He's trying to get a big one to Woods. We just talked about it. What a great job of adjusting to the football by Ferris. Uh, he sees it, goes up, holds on to it, comes down with the pick. Only third intercept interception thrown by Driscoll so far this season. And this Western Kentucky defense had four interceptions in the last two games coming into today. That's ball skills. That's that is. exactly what we were, we were talking about earlier. Adjust, got to the football. Well, Ferris is tied for first in the FBS and passes broken up. This time he makes a pick. Go back to work on offense, trying to run the football with Quinton Baker. Still nothing going on there. Oh, Baker tried to make a cut. He had a lane. Just, you know, sometimes those pellets in this artificial yeah. turf get you. He had it. He tried to cut back, and he just couldn't keep his footing. But he had a chance to get into that second level right there. Now Mike Sanford, the second youngest coach in the FBS to Lincoln Riley at Oklahoma. I just enjoy our time with him over the last couple of days. He and his coaching staff. Again, Baker this time cuts back, loses the ball, still loose. 
And I think FAU got it that they stay in bounds. And they did. Andrew Soro coming up with a loose pigskin. Well, the secondary is excellent. Ball hawks, they come after the football, great tackle, just swiped it out. It's rolling on the ground. That would have been, Baker would have been better off if he could have just fell on the football. Tried to pick it up. That's a big time turnover. Now they're going to take a look at it again. If it stands, that'll be the third turnover against Western Kentucky coming into, coming into today. And you can see contact right there. It's loose again. Tries to pick it up. Does he control it? I believe he controlled it before he's out of bounds. I think, so I think, that, I think that's a turnover. Here it is again. They were plus two in turnover margin coming into this game. Three today. That's going to hurt that little record. Yeah, it will, but did you look at the other side? What the Owls were? Yeah. They, they had a great number. I think they were plus 12. Were they not? Or plus 10? They were, they were plus nine. Seven turnovers committed. They four 16. I'll tell you what, that's... That's another miscue for Western Kentucky. They've shot themselves in the foot so many times today. I don't think they have any toes left. It's sudden change defense. They've really been pretty good at it, uh, but now they're going to have to do it again. And that's one of the things yeah. that, that, that coaches talk about all the time. They, they, you, you just keep coming to the table. You keep coming to the table and eventually, you know, you, you're, you're not going to be able to come up and stand up. Well, this After might be. The ruling on the field is confirmed. First down, FAU. So this will be the second time in this ball game that FAU will be starting in the red zone. Wow. I mean, you've got an offense that comes oh, yeah. in averaging over 485 yards and you're giving them this kind of field position? Oh yeah. I mean, Clayton White, the defense. Let's see where the ball gets punched out. Reaches out, coming from the backside, didn't see. You know, it's one of those things where you got your eyes in one direction, you didn't see him coming. Driscoll, the little dump pass, tiptoeing down the sideline as Solomon stepped out of bounds at the 10 yard line. Well, that's a well designed play. It's called the flood route. You fake everything going wide, you come back to the short side of the field, and just flood the zone, three receivers. Keep an eye on Caleb Woods, bottom of your screen, but they're going to. Have Driscoll keep it straight up ahead down to the one yard line. And they quickly get back to the line of scrimmage. They'll Driscoll. snap it right now. Oh, they will. Singletary trying to move the pile. Gets right to the goal line and is stopped. No signal from the officials. That'll be a second and goal situation. Singletary stays in. Driscoll under center. Nothing doing. Good job by the middle of that Western Kentucky defense. You can't Penalty pull the guy flag down. is thrown. Exactly right. This is going to, instead of being uh, third and short, this is going to be a first down. Well, uh, maybe on Derek Overstreet, the senior out of Paducah, Kentucky. And here's the word. There is no foul in the play. The result of the play brings up third down. Well, I guess they, wow. but here it is again. You can see, now watch, watch him be pulled out of the pile here. You pull a guy back, and slamming down, the whistle's already blown. I'm really surprised Yeah. that that, that didn't stand. Well, instead it is, as you mentioned, Keith, third down and goal. Driscoll came over to the sideline to talk to Kendall Bryles just for a second, the offensive coordinator. Here's Kendall on the left. Singletary waltz me into the end zone. Singletary second rushing touchdown of the afternoon. Well, on the outside here, might have had a chance to see a hold. It might have been a tackle, as a matter of fact. <laughs> they try to get to the corner of the outside. See, just reach up and grab. You know, 
it's sometimes it happens and you get away with it and that's what they did right there it's an excellent yeah. play call though to get to the outside to get him to the outside they just weren't getting it done in the middle this is an FAU offense that has scored more in the last two games coming into today than nine D1 schools have all season including Florida State and BYU 17 to 7 17 unanswered points FAU on top When you start talking about postseason honors, not just on the conference side, I'm talking nationally, you've got to put Devin Singletary's name in the hopper. No, no, no question. Watch him bounce right here. Sees it to the outside. I, I just love his vision. He just he felt it right there and just able to slide yeah. to the outside. How about 28 that, too? rushing touchdowns. How about that? Now last year versus Western Kentucky, he had only 37 yards rushing. He's got 30 here in quarter number two with 11-12 left to play in the half. I think he remembers last year and talking to some of the players yesterday over at their hotel. Oh yeah. This this FAU team, they remembered last year. Oh yeah. They're playing with a lot of confidence right now. Kicking into a very stiff win. Towder, the short kick at the 13. Whoa, what a hit. Backs up. Smart play getting down. We told you about Marshall playing FIU. In Florida International under Butch Davis in his first year, defensive coordinator Brent Guy and company, they've done a great job. They beat Marshall. Marshall no longer undefeated in conference play, 41-30. We will have FIU and UTSA next week, 7 o'clock Eastern, right here on Stadium. You talk about a showdown, East versus West. Well, you, you look at that scenario, that, that brings FIU back into the fold now. Absolutely. And don't forget, we will have the Shula Bowl, FIU, FAU, coming your way on Stadium also at the end of November. Besides that, we're not doing anything this year. <laughs> White looks to put it up. Here comes the rush. Spins around, gets away from it. Throws it into the FAU bench. There was nobody there, but he was outside the pocket. Chris Kiffin's going, why wasn't that intentional grounding? Well, he got it by the line of scrimmage as well. The, the, the two things, that, two scenarios, he was definitely outside the pocket. He reversed his field, might have got back into the original pocket, but this football gets back across the line of scrimmage. There was nobody within 20 yards of that ball. Now they empty the backfield for White. Three wide receivers, top of your screen. Throws it out of the flat, pass is complete. That'll be a first down. Still on his feet up to the 38-yard line. Kylan Towder. Boy, and White, he is hurt. Yeah, and, and White paid the price right here, Ron. And he took a blow at the end of this. Filled the deal right here, but boy, he takes a blow to deliver the football. Excellent run to make the move back to the inside. I tell you what, that's just good, strong running right there. We have a senior out of Mobile, Alabama, and it was Rashad Smith that lowered the boom on White Ooh. while he was releasing the football. He took, you got quarterbacks. Everybody says, well, they, they don't get hit that often. Oh, they take some blows where they're defenseless blows. You're, you're, you're releasing the football. You have no way to prepare for that blow. Oh, one thing I've seen already, what Western Kentucky's trying to do offensively, they're trying to create a mismatch they're forcing the safeties to cover them in this ball game so far. Let's see if that will continue. First and 10, here comes the rush. White, deep, near side, overthrown. Pass was intended for Sloan. I think your point's a big one. They have stayed in Tampa 2. Yep. Uh, with two deep safeties. These safeties are in great position, but you can see it. Right here at the end, a little shove right in. This has been a chippy ball game it from has the been. beginning. You mentioned Tampa too. Of course, Monty Kiffin, the father of Chris and Lane, a defensive coordinator advisory kind of role for FAU this year. Pass complete up to about the 44-yard line. To Cameron Eccles Looper, his fourth catch already today. Well, you know when you go across the middle, you're going to get blown up. You just got to prepare for it. We've mentioned it time. There's a, every point of a game has a turning point. 
I just don't think they can give this football back no. to FAU. They need a first down here. They only need three. Furby in the backfield along with White. White rolls, throws, pass complete. Will be short, I believe, of the first down. We got to see where they mark it. They went to Dion Yelder. Great spot. Boy, they did. did. I thought he. Tackle by Miller. And that's good for a Franklin Bank and Trust. Hillhopper. His strength and his length right there to get that first down. Well, they're going to challenge the spot on this. The runner reached the line to gain is under review. I thought they'd probably challenge that. Well, you can see right at the top of your screen, he trying to stay in bounds. He got a forward lean and put the football out. Well, I don't know about that. Uh, you know, I, I, the, on the field, it's called a first down. He's still in bounds there. He reaches out, gets back around it. Ron. It's a heads-up play by Elder, though. I, I do, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure there's enough evidence there to overturn this, but it looks like he's short right here. Yeah. One more look at it. That foot is right there on the mark. Well, I don't know what they're going to say on that. Again, so many times that we've seen since replay's been involved, though, it goes by, it's hard to overturn the call on the exactly. field unless it's got evidence for absolutely sure. And I don't think we have an angle there that gives evidence that really overturned that. Here's Justin Elliott with the After results. Review, the ruling on the field stands. First down, Western Kentucky. Now let's see if Western Kentucky goes to their up-tempo offense. They started doing that after the Ball State game. And talking to offensive coordinator Junior Adams yesterday, he told us it's in our DNA. And Mike Sanford saying it's in our DNA. We need to go up tempo. We haven't seen a whole lot of that here in the opening half thus Because far. they haven't had positive yardage a lot on first down, Ron. Good call. You've got you, you, you to get ahead of change on first down. Then you can go quick. Now the ball now at the 47-yard line. FAU puts five on the line. Simple handoff, Moses. Now you got a good positive yards right there. I would see them go right back to the line of scrimmage and, and go quickly, but not in a big hurry right now. I think if you're Western Kentucky, you just got to make sure you put some kind of points on the board. Yes, sir. White last year's newcomer of the year in the conference. He can throw the ball. Not much of a run by Jakari Moses, the freshman from Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. He has really emerged in this run game, which is significant if you're a Western Kentucky fan. Now Moses is going to go out. I just like saying Moses. <laughs> you know? Uh, he wants to part the Red Sea himself. There you go. Just a good name to, to say, you know? Third down, we'll call it five. Fant goes in motion. They're looking for Fant. He gets just boxed in right away. White goes to the secondary receiver, completes it for a first down to Quinn Jernigan. Uh, this is just outstanding offensive line work. And you're, you're back in the backfield. They come with a blitz. Everybody's in the right spot. Allow White to step up in the pocket and deliver the football. That's a great job up front. I like what Fant, he got into the secondary and they put a body on him. The White read that as he read that. Inside the 25-yard line to Yelder, the second reception of the ball game. And offensive line again does an outstanding job. Watch the seal. All the way around the corner, you can see the seal. Gave him a great pocket to step up in and deliver the football. The senior had no receptions coming into this season. He's got 29 this year. And another first down. They empty the backfield again for White. Hit as he throws, complete inside the 15, down to the 12. Jernigan makes the catch, his third of the ball game. Rhythm, rhythm, exactly. rhythm. Quarterbacks need rhythm, and right now, Mike, Mike White in rhythm. 
This is what we talked about their DNA. This is what they do well. First and 10, they can get a first down at the one. Straight ahead running. Shimmy Shake. Touchdown, DeAndre Furby. You get a defense on their heels, Ron, when you're able to block them when they come after you. All of a sudden now they sit back and don't come. The safeties give ground, they get on their heels, and then you hit them with a quick one. Good trap block right up front. And then he gets across the end line. Boy, that ball might have been coming out before he got across. Hurry up, kick the extra point if you're Western yeah. Kentucky. Brian Nusta kick the extra point. Well, they were the first to score on their opening drive. And then 17 unanswered points by FAU. But Western Kentucky scores. DeAndre Furby's third rushing touchdown of the season. Use your imagination, but that's the stadium logo. <laughs> e for effort, though. E for effort. 17 14, our score along with Keith Moreland. I'm Ron Thulin. Matty Morris starting to try to stay warm on the sideline. Glad you're with us today here in Bowling Green, Kentucky, with Marshall already losing. Both of these teams in a position to really scramble up the Eastern Division of Conference USA. Put themselves in that top oh, yeah. spot. Gareth White back to receive the kick. He's going to take a knee a couple yards deep. You and I were talking during the break. The final six minutes and 52 seconds. If you're Western Kentucky, this is a major defensive stand for them. I don't think there's a question. It, it, they want to make this a fourth quarter football game against a team that's been really good offensively, especially over the last three ball games. They got to find a way to come out right now and get a stop. Get to keep this crowd into it. It was an outstanding drive. I think this game may be decided in those next 652. Well, since joining Conference USA, Western Kentucky 14 and 2 versus the league opponents at home. Trying to extend those numbers. And now FAU takes over. Singletary gets up to the 28. That'll be a pickup of three on the play, or how I should say, picks up three on the play. And Singletary get dinged up a little bit, but he's obviously okay. He'll stay in the game. Driscoll takes his time. Play clock at 10. Plenty of time. Play action. Pump fake. Looks deep down near side. Up in the air under throw pass was intended for Cameron Solomon but it was well under thrown uh, that's into the breeze Ron that this breeze is picking up again uh, blowing much harder than it was at the beginning of the ball game he does a nice job staying underneath that you know when the ball the quarterback's throwing into the breeze you can stay under the football Driscoll goes back to work gets the first down toss over the 35 yard line That'll be a pickup of about eight on the play to let Dante Harris only his second reception of the season. It goes for nine. That's the biggest gain he's had this year. Singletary breaks a tackle over the 40 still on his feet inside the 35 down to the 32. That's just gashing you when you're down. You get the first down sprint to the line of scrimmage get great blocking and then. Singletary, one person is not going to bring him down. Picked up 29 on the play, and what's kind of funny to watch is the chain gang on the far side having to haul down there quickly before the next play goes off. Driscoll keeps it. The stiff arm, they stretch it out. That is just an outstanding defensive play by DeCorian Darden. Well, Darden didn't give. He didn't take the inside fake. He, he you know, the sidelines has never missed a tackle run. No. So you got to exactly. keep pushing him that way. It ain't, it, it's it's 100%. Well, Darden had a game saving tackle last week in the ball game. They call him a hustle player, and we saw it a couple of times so far today. Buddy Howe 
Boy, I don't know what exploded after he took that hit. But I it, think somebody's it looked like helmet, glitter. <laughs> somebody's helmet's got some shine oh, off of it. I'll tell you that. Boy, there was some glitter coming off the helmet. I'm not sure if you can see it on the replay. Watch this. Right there. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Boom. I, I wasn't sure what that was. Third down and eight. Driscoll rifle in the pass. I think he stepped out of bounds. That is incomplete to Caleb Woods. His back foot was out of bounds and he came back in. Well, you know, if, he, if he's out of bounds and he's the first guy to touch it coming back in, it's a penalty as well. No call on the play, but they did call it. Hang on, they're, they're, they're talking about it now. If he was out of bounds and came back. He stepped out. He's the first guy to come back in and touch it. That's that should cost him yeah, penalty that, yards instead. This is this is right at the end of the range for both of these kickers. You know, we were talking about how long they can go. This is going to be marked down at the 38 yard line. This will be a 48 yard attempt for Greg Joseph. His long is 54 into the win. Does it get enough? And it does. That's a big time kick. A big time kick. Well, he's already made a 29 yarder. So Joseph is now 10 of 11 on the season, and that's big three, I think, for Lane Kiffin. Well, I don't, I don't think there's a question. Dude. But if you give the Hilltoppers credit too, I mean, they, they found a way to get a stop, going to get a chance with the football back, come down to answer. Ron, that would have been good from 52 so. into that direction. You no, know, you and I were watching him before the game, and he had, he spent a lot of time down this end of the field, sure warming did. up and practicing. But we were noticing the drive he had on his kicks. And he showed it there. 436 to play in the half. We've got a good one going on here in Bowling Green. Cameron Eccles Looper. So dangerous back to receive it. Got a chance to have the football to try to take the lead with all the turnovers you've had in the first half. That to me it says a lot about this Western Kentucky ball club. And it's going to be Eccles Looper on the short kick. Gets up to the 25. A penalty flag comes flying in from the backside. Usually this is a a push in the back or a hold. Long discussion here. They're making sure the ball placement. During the return, holding, receiving team, number 16. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Goes from start really good starting field position to now you in the shadow of your own goalpost. Yeah. It's all about first down. We saw in the previous drive when the Hilltoppers found a way to get four, five, six yards mm -hmm. ahead of the chains, they're able to move the ball down the field. But now the Hilltoppers will take over at the 15 yard line with 429 to play in the half. Try to get something going on the running game. DeAndre Furby already with a rushing touchdown doesn't get a whole lot. Well, these two deep safeties, it's hard to get vertical right now in the passing game. They're going with the win the final four minutes. And White will put it up. Four man rush. Here comes the pressure. A little safety valve pass. It will be close to the first down, about a yard short to Jakari Moses, only his 11th catch of the season. Now, veteran quarterbacks are so important. He didn't panic here, just drops it down. He was trying to double move on the outside, just checked down and made it a manageable third down. And they only need a yard. Four of six on third down so far. Average third down attempt is just 
been a shade under five yards. Two tight ends in the game here. And White goes under center. Got the first down. Good power running by Moses. You just don't see Western Kentucky with two tight ends very often. He is a special player, Jakari. Downhill Moses. running. Yeah, special, special player. That man, remember that name, because he's going to be in Conference USA, a lot of all conference teams in years to come. Try to stick with that run game up to the 30 yard line again, it is Moses. Clock runs with 235 in Western Kentucky. Keith doesn't seem like they're in any hurry. They're not in a big hurry. 425 alignment now defensively with a free safety. White looks to put it up. Grabbed around the ankles, gets rid of the football, but it'll be incomplete. Good pressure again put on by this FAU front four. Brings up a third down situation. Yelder, and they need six. Yelder trying on a drag across the middle. Smith had a piece of him, but it was incidental contact sort of disrupted the play because of the pressure. This is when you might see FAU come after him right here. Neither team with a sack so far this afternoon. FAU only showing four. They look like they may bring six. And they bring five. White reads it, throws it. Near side pass. Caught at the 35-yard line by Jaquez Sloan. This is a perfectly thrown football. That's outstanding coverage. Nothing you can do about it as a defensive back there. You can't play it any better. What a great pass. Second completion of plus 20 yards, and that's what Mike Sanford wanted to see from his team. The keeper by White wisely slides, but not before he gets the first down of the 28. They're going to actually bring him back to the 30, Ron, oh, where they started wow. to slide. I thought he had the first down. I thought he did, too. Clock now a factor. 138 and running. Get the first down, regroup, guys. White looks to put it up. He wants six. Throws the deep out, passes incomplete to Fan. Fans wanted a penalty flag, not going to get it. I like the play call, though. I do too. And a senior quarterback, he can take a shot down the field because you can come back here on third mm -hmm. and short and get the first down. They only need two. They've had some success on a cutback with their tailbacks. Now they're six of eight on third down. FAU bunching up the line of scrimmage. There's the cutback. And there's the first down. Furby, good job reading where the offensive line. Now we got some pushing and shoving at the 30. Grabbing each other around the face mask and finally the players are separated. It's, it's been that type of game from the beginning. Clock moving yeah. again. 120 to play. Western Kentucky, all three of their timeouts are remaining. White has time, rifling over the middle. Good defensive play. And here comes the penalty flag, though. Say they got a little bit too big of a piece of them. A half a step early. Just as the football's being Defense. delivered. Number 18. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. That'll be on Jalen Young. Boy, I tell you what, I thought that was pretty close. I thought, yeah, Young... if, 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 if he was there, it was a, a tick of a second early. So instead, they've got first down. They're in the red zone at the 12 yard line with 61 seconds left to play in the opening half. 
Rolling has time. Here comes the chase. White got a lot of green in front of him. Squares his body. Throws. Touchdown. Dion Yelder, his fourth of the year. You know, we were talking to the coaching staff yesterday about Mike White. The one thing they said, Keith, is he will hold on to the ball and wait for things to open up. Well, he bought time here with his feet. He was nothing, flooding on the outside, and then the Yeldon did a great job of coming back across the end line with his quarterback. When his quarterback turns direction, you've got to change directions as a wide receiver. Founding, pitch and catch, extra point away from taking the lead. And the extra point is good. So after FA, FAU scored 17 unanswered points, Western Kentucky comes back on a 10-play, 85-yard drive that covered 345, showed great patience, but you got to hang that drive on the quarterback, Mike White. Oh, no doubt. I mean, he, he bought time. He was really good with the receiver. A really big third and two conversion on the ground, a major part of that, and then take the lead. I think you got to give your hat off, too, to the Western Kentucky defense. They've held this FAU offense to only 160 yards, while their offense, Western Kentucky, has put up 247 here in the opening Yeah, half. this is an offense that had 800, count of 800 last week. And they're also staying even on plays. 41 plays for FAU, 42 for Western Kentucky here in this opening half. I think Western or FAU wanted a lot more plays than what they've gotten. Here's White. 45 seconds, all three timeouts left for FAU. He returned at 14. Well, for me, if you get 10 yards on this first play, you use a timeout, and you try to come away and see if you can't get in field goal range. You have minus yardage or negative yardage of any kind right here. I, into this breeze, I don't think you can try to push it down the field at this point, especially into this breeze. FAU will get the ball to begin the second half, but they still have 45 seconds to work with here. Western Kentucky, four-game win streak. FAU, a three-game win streak. Driscoll has time, throws deep down the middle, has a man overthrown. Wide open. I'll tell you, Pico Harrison made a nice little move to get open. Well, he did. Sold it to the outside. Ron came back to the inside. Driscoll just threw it too far to the outside. Here's Pico Harrison here. Check that. That's Cameron Solomon. Let's go back to our run game. Devin Singletary. Got the first down over the 40 to the 43 yard line. I think you use your time out here. I do too, he picked up 20 by the way. Well they've got three timeouts left and they're not gonna use it. Now the penalty flag. They're gonna call motion against FAU. I don't think they were in set position. I don't think they were either. That'll be the fourth penalty against the Owls today. And I'm not sure that the clock actually stopped on the play where they to reset the chains. That's a, that's a good good observation. So they may the be official, going back yeah. here to find out how much time is left on the clock. As I, in my opinion, the clock never stopped. False start. False start. Offense. Offense. Number, Number four. four. Five yard Five penalty, down. second down. FAU has elected to take a timeout to avoid a 10 second runoff. It's their first of the half. It will be 30 seconds. Now that was on Caleb Woods. Correction. They want a full timeout. It will be 60 seconds. Well, so Coach Kiffin's going to talk about it with Kendall Bryles, our offensive coordinator. I think you got you got some options. You got that first down we talked about. Yeah. Now you're 20 yards putting yourself in position to come away with some points. You still have two timeouts. And what a big run again. That's been a major part of the half. I tell you, go back and look at that scenario. I do not believe that clock ever shut down uh, during that. That might have cost them right. three or four seconds. 
Hey, Western Kentucky, one thing that uh, Mike Sanford was telling us yesterday, nothing's come easy for this team this year or for him as a coach. And I said, what? Well, that's not good. He goes, no, I actually like it. He said, I think it's made us dig a little deeper. These guys understand what they're going through right now. And as a first-year head coach, he's understanding what it takes to be a head coach. Oh, yeah, he's learning a whole lot. Big time. A whole yeah. lot. And I mentioned it earlier, but after the UTEP game, they had to reevaluate everything they were doing and with everybody that was doing that. That's a sign of somebody that wants to keep getting better as the year goes on. Timeout's over. First down and 15. Driscoll goes back to work. Looks. Rifle in the pass. That was close. Up over the back. Pass was intended for Solomon. No flag thrown. Lane Kiffin, Lane Kiffin is just oh, living. Yeah. He's out on the field. He almost got out to the numbers running after it. No call on the play. He's still talking. Now you couldn't see where that left hand was. That's the first time we've seen Western Kentucky come after him. They came with a blitz that time. Well, Darden did a pretty good job. Here comes the pressure. Driscoll gets away, throws across his body. What a hit and a catch. That is what you call a slobber knocker hit by DeAndre Ferris. Yeah, but you got to get back to the line of scrimmage. It's one of the best hits of the year that I've seen, but timeout's got to be called, and Western Kentucky will take one. That's a smart timeout, Ron. Your team is excited, but you cannot afford to not be in position yeah. when the next play is being run. And Lane Kiffin is still pleading his case to the officials on what he thought should have been an interception. I'll tell you what, DeAndre Ferris already with an interception today. They call him a hard worker, a student of the game. I'll add hard hitter also to that little uh, those descriptions of him. There's a good look at Ferris, the junior out of Shelbyville, Kentucky. I was kidding the coaches. I said, yeah, I'll tell you how old I am. I remember when DeAndre Ferris got here and he was a wide receiver. Well, now you, you've got, this is your options. If you're Kendall Browles here, you're looking at, say, look, I, I got to get vertical here if I'm going to have any chance with 10 seconds to score any yeah. points before the half. Two timeouts left for FAU. I think they're just going to go to the yeah, locker room. They're going to the locker room. Single Terry is thrown down, and that's going to do it. What a last four minutes for Western Kentucky. It looked like FAU had control of this game when they reeled off 17 straight points. But Western Kentucky comes right back on their own and they take the lead at 21-20. Just a flat out impressive performance by both the offense and the defense for the Hilltoppers. Well, I, I think with the thing that's it stepped up for me it's what they've done defensively, Ron, here in this first half. Offensively, they've been scoring points, and, and I felt like they could get some points, but defensively, it's been impressive. I mean, you look at this FAU team. They had 460 yards before halftime last week. This week, they only have a total of 185 yards. Uh, that's a huge difference. With us today, our players and staff representing one of the most memorable football teams. Mike Stanford, the head coach of Western Kentucky, he is standing by. We're going to get a word from him before he heads into the locker room. And I think, I think they did exactly what he wanted them to do. And here's Mike now with Maddie. Coach, you guys got on the board first. How big is that going into the half? It's big, you know, you look at college football, you know, whoever scores right before half, a lot of times that dictates the, the outcome of the game, but, you know, we're not going to take that for granted. We got we to play better in the third quarter. It's been an Achilles heel of ours this season, so we got to play our best football in this third quarter. How, how is your defense doing so far? Obviously, you guys held them to two field goals. I, I'm really, really pleased with our defense. The turnovers were, were completely out of our characteristic offensively and special teams to have three in the first 17 minutes, put our defense on short fields, very challenging. But they did a great job of keeping the points off the board against one of the best offenses right now in college football. Awesome. We, we have to play better in the second half. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Coaches are never satisfied. You're winning. You no. still got to play better in the second yes, half. Yes, you do. But we do have a lot of second half football to come your way. It's a major battle in the Eastern Division of Conference USA. And at intermission, FAU 
leading Western Kentucky 21 20. Halftime activity straight ahead. I'm Ray Crawford here in our stadium studios, and we'll get you back to the game in just a few moments. Let's talk Western Kentucky basketball. I'm pleased to be joined by uh, Dwight Colby, who plays for the Hilltoppers. And, Dwight, you played uh, some years at Kansas. How are you meshing now with your new teammates? Uh, just meshing great. Uh, starting to get to know everybody uh, much better. We're starting to figure out each other, how, how each other play. And we're just, we're just taking it one day at a time and, and trying to get better. What was it about Western Kentucky that appealed to you to continue your basketball career? Uh, Western Kentucky just had a great basketball tradition and just something I, I wanted to be a part of. When talking to, uh, talking to Coach uh, Stansberry, when he's recruiting me, he just told me uh, the right stuff that I need to hear, and, and I'm here. A lot of new faces on the team this year. You're going to have a chance to kind of get some of that chemistry going against the opposition with some key exhibition games against Campbellsville and Cumberland. Uh, how important are those two games going to be, again, to continue to build the chemistry amongst the team? Uh, we, we've been playing some scrimmages, trying to figure out uh, like where like where we at, but I think the guys are kind of tired of playing against each other. So those, those games would be a nice little warm-up to uh, what you should expect for the season. Uh, it, will, it will help us get some little kinks out that, that we need to get better at. And hopefully it will happen. So you were born in the Bahamas. Uh, the Hilltoppers are playing in the battle of for Atlantis, rather uh, that tournament coming around in Thanksgiving. How important is that tournament and how much are you looking forward to, to playing in that? Uh, I can't, can't, can't wait to be a part of it. It's a lot of good teams inside that inside the tournament. Uh, it really it really show how good we are. We got to come uh, with our with our A game and, and play the best of our ability. Because if we don't, then teams are pretty good. Uh, can't get embarrassed there, but you, you know, you hopefully you'll come up with some wins. And for Hilltoppers fans out there watching, uh, what how would you define success for this Western Kentucky team this season? Success, uh, just given toughness, uh, effort. That's all coach. That's all coach wants. Uh, once we once we play to the best of our ability and, and do what we're supposed to do, it'll, it'll, it will be successful. This is a program that's had a great history in the postseason, making the NCAA tournament success in Conference USA. How does playing in the Conference USA prepare you for the NCAA tournament? Uh, there's a, there's a lot of good uh, teams in the conference that that could help us when we reach the tournament. Um, we just gotta, we just gotta play focus and not take any team for granted. And just let's keep playing hard and, and and win as much games as we can and win championship to hopefully make it to the tournament and, and make a run. Well, Dwight, I know uh, you're excited. Fans are excited about the upcoming season. We wish you all the best of luck this year. Thanks for being with us. All right, thank you. And a reminder for a nightly look at the day in sports. Be sure to check out the rally at 11 o'clock and 1 a.m. Eastern at WatchStadium.com. We'll get you back to the game next. Western Kentucky scores 14 points in the final six minutes and 52 seconds, and they are leading FAU at intermission 21-20. Low at Keith Moreland. I'm Rob Thule, and I think a couple of things you have to consider. Number one, two of FAU's touchdowns, they started that possession in the red zone. Number two, Western Kentucky they had a number of miscues, and I'm surprised they've got this lead because of those. Well, you had three turnovers, and as you said, two of those three yeah. happened inside their own red zone. You looked at the scenario, they could have very easily given up in this game. I mean, at one point, it was 17-7, and you're thinking, oh, can they come back? Well, all they do is come back and take the lead at halftime. And they do it for me. Right. With this great offense, it's all about defense. And we still have a lot of football left to be played. Let's get you caught up on scores. And there was one big one already today because Marshall undefeated in conference play. They lose to FIU 41-30 again. FIU next week at home against UTSA and we will be there. This is kind of a surprise. Rice beating Louisiana Tech 42-28. I, I, I take that back. It should be Louisiana Tech leading Rice 42-28. So Louisiana Tech trying to bounce back from that overtime loss last week. 
And a couple of games, of course, will be also be played tonight. And that is a good game, 122 to 111. Well, I tell you what, if, it, if, if that score, if they were they were around for a while. There wasn't a lot of defense in that game. Well, that's that's Dan D'Antoni coaching that, the no. basketball coach at Marshall, because he doesn't believe in defense. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll take a break. We'll have highlights, and they'll be in color again this week, plus a bunch of numbers coming up from the first half of play when we come back. Twenty-one twenty is our score. Western Kentucky leading FAU at intermission. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the opening half, and it started out a little sloppy. Dude. Yeah, but there's no question that when you look at Western Kentucky, they had stops. Their defense was playing brilliant. They get a 15-yard penalty, then they hold them again. You have a roughing to kick them, but that's not the biggest part of that play. The ball bounded into one of their defenders, put it in the end zone, and just like that, back-to-back -back touchdowns by Florida Atlantic, and you looked at it, ooh, it was trouble. 17-7 at that point, but boy, did they have some answers. And here comes the Hilltoppers right back in the ball game. Well, they get the rushing touchdown from Ferber, then they go up in the air, Look, me, 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 throw it to me, please throw it to me, and they finally do. They hit Dion Yelder, the senior out of Louisville, Kentucky, for the touchdown, and they have the lead. Somebody's excited. Second half straight ahead for Bowling Green. In the second half, and they will be going with the win. This is going to be a short kick. White will take it at the 10. Scoots over the 30, tripped up as he gets to the 37-yard line. Maddie, he had a chance to talk to Lane Kiffin and some of the FAU people. What were their thoughts in the first half? I caught up with Coach Kiffin coming out of the locker room. He said the players are mad, so they themselves were guys pumping each other up. We got it. We got this. We're in this game still. They were just very encouraging. Keep fighting. We can do this. Well, you know, he, he was telling us and, and also has been quoted in the local articles that this team plays better when they're angry. Yeah, with a chip on their shoulder. Yeah, well, they need a chip on their shoulder. Caleb Woods now goes top of your screen. <laughs> Willie Wright back in the lineup, got the football. Stops, plants the foot, cuts back, still on his feet. Gets a block over the 50. Takes a hit, but not before he gets down to the 41-yard line. Does he create some excitement? Wow. I mean, he made two outstanding moves once he gets to the outside. Now, once you bring it back across the green, and then right here, how does he get away from that? Then he gets to the outside. Well, he picked up 22, Singletary. Picks up about five on first down. Two very impressive plays back to back for FAU. They need to get back. Time of possession in the first half run was the important thing for me. Western Kentucky hold the edge. Second half, see if Florida Atlantic can get into what they want to do, mm -hmm. and that's keep the football. Well, the coach or the players were telling me that Kendall Bryles wants the players to be themselves, be able to play fast. They put it into the belly of Singletary and he'll get the first down to the 29 yard line in the past few weeks that we've been watching this team they have a different mindset and a different focus especially on offense FAU does Driscoll keeps it nothing doing and that was one of the keys for this Western Kentucky defense they said you've got to account for Driscoll in the run game. You're right, and they've done a nice job of keeping him from getting the corner. Even when they've collapsed down on the tailback where it's the read says, pull it out. He hasn't been able to get to the corner. Minus yardage there. Once again, the hand signals by Kendall Bryles. Single Terry, nothing doing. In fact, he may lose another half a yard. That's a nice job of those four guys up front who really played well at times in that first half. When you look at Johnson and Lewis, those two, big two different tackles have to play well. Singletary with only 88 yards running the football, but now he gets into the secondary. Bowls his way down to the 23. That'll be about three yards short, possibly four short of the first down. Well, four that fourth down. This is a big play. I think well, you've got to take the points. Well, you know, it's funny. We were talking to Lane about that yesterday and also the Western Kentucky staff. They said Coach Kiffin likes to go for it. He has tried 19 times on fourth down, but not this time. 
Joseph a 29 yarder and a 48 yarder already. This will be a 42 yard attempt for Greg Joseph. The graduate student out of Boca Raton. Low snap. Uh oh. There's a lot of green. Joseph the trailing back. They lean to the first down. Not going to get it. A stop by Western Kentucky after the faulty hold. Snap didn't look that bad. It was a little low, but as the, the ball starts to come back, and one thing he disrupted the time, and it was a little low, couldn't get it down. Gets to the outside. I thought they maybe run option right here. I thought so too. I thought with Joseph trailing, he's a big guy at 6'1, 210, but Rickle could never get the ball down from the snap by Clancy. Well, I tell you what. Whatever it takes defensively, that's what coaches always talk oh, about. Yeah. Well, that's a break right there. Got a defensive stop now, a chance to expand on the lead. I thought we were going to have a Garo Yepremian moment there. <laughs> for those of you over the age of 50, <laughs> that was an ugly pass. That was yeah, still one of the all-time worst. <laughs> Trying to get something going on oh, yeah, the run there. game. Here is DeAndre Furby had a fumble and a touchdown run in the opening 30 minutes. Did you notice, as I did in the first half, Ron, we were talking a little bit in the break. I think when this Western Kentucky offense went into their little bit of a hurry yeah. up, it's when they got some rhythm. I agree. Oh, yeah. well, like we were talking, you know, uh, Junior Adams, the offensive coordinator, says it's our DNA. It's what we need to do to be good. The numbers on White. Looks to increase those numbers. Pass overthrown intended for Sloan. And, you know, they want to go to Sloan because the last couple of weeks he's been able to catch the deep ball. Uh, he, he, this is what he'd like to have Ooh. back. This ball should have been caught. Uh, it was in his hands. He on a quick seam to the inside. It's almost he was looking for the safety before he secured the football. Is going to bring up a third down. White averages 26 completions a game. Third down, they need seven. Looking. Getting time, throw it, caught over the middle, first down to Dion Yelder again. Well, I tell you what, this is an outstanding catch. Hard to do on a cold night to reach behind you and catch the football. And he did a nice job of reaching behind him. This ball was out of his reach, able to pull it in. Well, he picked up 16 on the play. And the coach was telling us about him yesterday, saying he is one tough-minded guy and he's just a flat out good football player. That's a great catch right there. Hunter Snyder, the one little dinged up there. Five targets, four receptions, and of course he's got the touchdown pass. Two backs in the backfield here. White playing his best football of this year the last couple of games. Nothing doing, tripped up. Quentin Baker. Maybe got one on the play. They're trying to, this is an, called an influence run. What you're trying to do is influence the defensive lineman to go, and you're cutting back against it. Nice job of staying at home. Past two games for Mike White, ten touchdowns, one interception, has completed 70% of his tosses. They rush four, he's got time, and he just sails it. Uh, no separation right there. As a wide receiver, you got to find a way to get some separation. Excellent coverage. Nowhere to go with the football. And another big, big third down here in the third quarter. He got a break with the miscue on the field goal attempt. See if you can keep the drive going. Well, this FAU defense already with one interception so far today. White looks, pass time, pass complete to Yelder again. That could be good for another first down, just depending on the spot, and I think they're going to give it to him. I tell you what, this is this is just hard, hard to do right here is to stay in there, know you're going to get hit, took a blow, got the ball, let it get into it, protected it, got the first down. And again, Mike White spreading the ball around. Six different receivers have caught a pass today. Nothing on the ground game, Quentin Baker. And it was interesting because we were talking to the coaches yesterday. Early on in the season, I said, did you guys get tunnel vision 
with your wide receivers. And I think once again, the Louisiana Tech game, they had a look how they were going to improve and spreading the ball around was one yeah. way to improve. Got to use all your weapons. And they have done that. One of three FBS teams to have at least eight wide receivers catch a pass in every game. White throws, caught, another first down, down to the 34-yard line, Jaquiz Sloan. Misses the easy catch, gets the hard one. Yes, exactly right. This is a difficult tip. Has to climb the ladder, White delivers it. This is just the inside curl from the slot receiver, and he just goes up. White delivers it. Well, this is a tough catch. Comes down with it. I'll tell you, that's just flat out good protection, too. FAU not known for sacking quarterbacks, only 11 sacks, but Western Kentucky has given up 21 this year coming into tonight. Four man rush again. White's got pressure, throws the deep out. Caught tiptoeing down the sideline, Sloan again. Well, this is an outstanding route by Sloan. He really sold the deep ball right here. Fla a late flag came in on the end of this as Sloan sold it to the outside, came back, go up, make the catch. Could this be offensive pass interference? Did he get his hands on the, the mm, defender? Oh, I don't know. Oh, it's holding. Okay. So that'll be Sloan's fourth catch of the evening and to put that in perspective he only had six total coming into tonight well, this is an excellent route on the outside holding it's defense number 29 10 yard penalty automatic first down now the catch was still made and Lane Kiffin didn't like it Morell Smith the redshirt freshman of Miramar Florida the man called for the infraction yeah, he's got a, there's about three more yards. If you're going back to original set of the line of scrimmage, you got to go, yeah, all right, yeah. now they're getting it set. Just got to make sure you get it in the right spot. It would have been about three yards different than the catch and the defensive holding. You, you know, and I, I go back to what we mentioned in that first half, what Lane was telling us last night. We can't let this team, meaning Western Kentucky, think they're in the ball game and to have them hang around. Drew Eccles now in a quarterback, the junior out of, Daytona, Florida, more of a runner. And that's what he'll do. Cuts inside, takes a whack as he gets inside the 20. They'll mark him out at the 17 yard line, but the blocking in front of the junior was good. Well, it was good, but you got to account. That you don't have an account for that. You just got more people to block, and you got defenders. Good positive yards in the red zone. And now Mike White comes in. Little, little change up there, and we, we thought that would happen today. Actually, more than we've seen so far. Yeah. Straight ahead, running up the middle, Furby. Another first down, down to the 10-yard line, a pickup of seven. Well, zone blocking up front, everybody helmet on helmet, and just allow your tailback to find that soft spot. And he kicks it up in there, gets it down. First and goal, 10. 88 yards rushing in this ball game they've only rushed for over 100 yards this season three times but it's first and goal right at the 10. white looks throws one-handed catch not good i Just, thought he might be able to pull that down but moses couldn't do it i tell you what sometimes you even a veteran guy a senior like mike white he just saw the route develop. It was there. I think he was a tenth of a second early in throwing the football. Didn't allow the wheel route to develop. Well, he got the coverage he wanted. And now Baker goes in motion. White looks. They'll try it again. Giving it off to Moses. Looks inside the five. Gets down to the three. Uh, red zone offense has not been great this season for the Hilltoppers. They they got to find a way right here not to settle for a, a field goal. Oh, yeah. Attempt. And it'll be third down and goal to go. Ball sitting at the three yard line. And White will go under center. A lot of movement on that FAU defensive line. 
Straight ahead, running, nothing doing for Furby. He is going to be stacked up and pushed back to the seven. Well, Gilbert coming off the corner that time. Uh, he was coming to the free safety, and he just had a clean shot in the backfield. And they're going to have to settle for a field goal attempt. Well, I tell you what, you look back later in this ball game. for me, that is yeah. a huge defensive stop for the Owls. I agree. Ryan Nuss, four of seven on the season, as long as 44. They're going to put it right at about the 14. We'll call it the 15. So this will be a 25-yard field goal attempt. First time he's attempted one from this distance this year. And it is blocked. Up in the air, still loose, and they're just going to down it at the three. It looked like Shelton Lewis may have gotten a piece of it. Oh, I don't think there was a question coming off the corner. Lewis gets his hands up. The snap was slow and high, Ron. It just it, it just was so slowly developing. Got a hand up on it. Boy, I'll tell you what, both of Boy. these teams field goal tro troubles here in the third quarter. is our score six minutes remaining in quarter number three we want to remind you to tap into the group of five for extensive coverage on your teams with campus insiders join Ray Crawford former Florida State quarterback Brian McFadden and insider reports from colleges across America catch campus insiders weekdays at 4 30 p.m. only on watch stadium.com I'm with Keith Moreland Matty Morris I'm Rob Thulin good to have you with us the block field goal attempt gives FAU possession after the blocks move back out to the 20 because the, the kick was inside the 20-yard line. Driscoll double pumps, throws, passes incomplete, little high for Harrison Bryant, the tight end. Well, nice job up front. When you, you can't get there on the quick run pass option, you got to get your hands yeah. in the air. And that's exactly what it, it forced him to double pump. And Driscoll couldn't get the ball down. He was open. Very impressive defensive effort tonight by Western Kentucky. Singletary looking for something and he is going to be wrapped up. Singletary hasn't had a whole lot tonight. That'll put him close to 100 yards rushing, but they've been a hard 100 yards rushing he's earned. And it is third down. They need eight. Haven't been good on third down today. Only five of 12 for FAU. Showing blitz. They haven't come but twice all ball game. Driscoll looks, throws, ball tip, incomplete. And it's funny because they were telling us yesterday that they can't blitz. They don't want any exotic third down plays. Well, they came that time with there the blitz, go. and it led to the, the tip ball. Well, that's great defense. Your, your offense moved it down, uh, had a field goal blocked, and all of a sudden momentum might have been shifted, and your defense comes out three and out. I'll tell you, tip of the hat for Clayton White and the entire defensive staff. This has been a defense, though, that's been playing well. It's the fewest points allowed through seven games since 2003 for Western Kentucky. Well, they've been the story of the ball game for me. I agree. Rickle to kick it away. Fant standing back at the 40, and he's going to have to backtrack. Great punt. Fielded at the 27, and that's where they will take over. That's how you get yourself out of a hole with a good punt. We'll take a break. Western Kentucky with a football when we come back. You looking for their first four game win streak since 2013. Kendall Bryles coaching up the offense on the near sideline. They trailed 21 20 and the potent offense has not been that potent tonight. Well, they, but that doesn't mean they're not going to be. Oh, you're right. I mean, you're taking away. But I tell you what, I think it's going to their next time they get the football. I think they're going to change their focus a little bit and maybe get some play action early and try to get ahead of the change. They put themselves in third and oh, long yeah. in the last four possessions. Now, the play count is about even between the two, which is interesting. So here comes Mike White and company. They've got a little time on their side, and they're going to run the football. FAU does a nice job stringing it out. Quit Baker maybe got two on the play. Yeah, but he got positive yardage. He had two tight ends. He got good blocking up front for those guys. 
up front. He just bounced it to the out. I think he got four on the play, Keith. Yeah, but I'm telling you, I, he, got, he did a nice job getting to the outside. Good blocking up front. You saw the pancake right in front of you there. Once again, this offense and offensive line was challenged to get four yards on first down because that allows you to have that short yardage situation, which they get for the first down. Well, that's nice feet right there. He just yeah. moves his feet around, puts himself in position where Baker does that time get the first down. They're approaching 100 yards on the ground now. Which is something, as we mentioned earlier, they haven't done a whole lot of. Pass, they find the seam of the defense, and that'll be good for another seven-yard pickup. They hook it up with Eccles Looper, his fifth catch today. Uh, this is White was going this way the whole time. I like what Looper did there at the end, Ron. He set in that spot. Mm -hmm. He didn't continue his route into the linebackers. See, he is a heady play. He's dynamic. He's the fastest receiver that Western Kentucky has. White keeps it. That's a great play, a little trick play. Getting it into the hands of Fant. We're going to we have, have a holding. penalty flag. Yeah, I think you're right. This is the quintessential RPO run. I mean, the <laughs> run pass option. Holding. You... Offense. Number 19. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Still second down. When you when you design a run pass option, watch the run. Fake the run. It's not there. Come to the outside. You think he's running, and right now he's looking for a receiver. There's the hole right in front of you. Well, I tell you what. That is hard to defend. Oh, yeah. White did a good job of selling it, too. He did. Now, Fant will go in the slot near side. Two straight games with a touchdown reception for Nicarius Fant. Man free zone right now. They bring five. Here comes the blitz. White reads it. Tosses it out to Baker. Baker with a couple of nice moves gets down to the 45. But again, it starts with the read by Mike White. Now, we talked about it in the open of our program tonight. He has done an outstanding job over the last three weeks of, of getting his reads, no score to go, and then Baker finishes. How about nine yards after contact in the first down? I like that. Into FAU territory with 3.05 to play in the third. White goes lateral, tries to throw across his body. Receiver was open, and Quinn Jernigan. Such a tough pass, though, Cleveland. I'm going to give the defense a ton of credit here now. This is that same run pass option. All the guys are holding their own, picking up receivers. They didn't really give him an option to throw the football. Exactly. A number of NFL scouts are here tonight, and they're looking at Mike White, among other players. His leadership and his poise what really stands out. Goes back, looks, deep throw, wide open, at the far side, incomplete. That's Pat great. Intended for Sloan, and the flag comes in. I, I, I don't think there was a flag at the end of the play. I think there's holding it is. It before the route. I think you're absolutely right, because they're showing holding at about the 30. Yeah, I, I, I think this defensive holding, it's going against FAU, but... For me, the end of it, the, the defense was fine, but the whole happened Prior early. To the pass. Pass. Holding. 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 Defense. defense. Number 29. 10-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Terrell Smith, what? the redshirt freshman on the hold. Watch right at the top of your screen right here as he comes out. That left hand gets a hold of that jersey, pulls him down. The end of this, this is this great defense right there at yeah. the end. But it's the hold right as he started up the vertical route. Ball goes down to the 35-yard line, first and 10. Western Kentucky milking the clock, keeping the ball away from FAU's offense. FAU rushes five. White reads it again, dumps it off to Moses. Got another first down inside the 25, down to the 21. Ron, go right back to what you just exactly. said. Exactly. Progression of reads. White just does not panic. Nope. You know, the coaches were saying sometimes we wish he'd get rid of it a little quicker, but he wants to see how things are playing out. Moses, nothing. I tell you what, it looked like this football came out. I'm, I'm telling you, this looked like a turnover. Now they're going to have some communication here. He pulled this ball out, it looked like to me. We've got a player down for FAU. 
Back at the 15-yard line. I'm not sure if what Nagel. Nagel yeah. I'm telling you, Nagel got a piece of this football. You get a chance to see it right here at the end as he charts the spin. Is he down yet? This football is... No, he never. He was rolling on top of Nagel. He, he never did he hit the ground. Down. I don't think he was either. Well, we're gonna we're gonna debate that during the timeout. <laughs> we'll be back after this. Tonight he walked off under his own power. Let's look at that last play again. We were debating whether the knee hit. Or did he just roll on top of uh, Hagel? Well, you just see it right here. It didn't. Look, the only thing possible is that left knee. But I never see that left knee down, and his elbow comes down there. But the football's out at that point. Well, nevertheless, not Western reviewed. Did, no, not reviewed. Second down and nine. Ball right on the 20-yard line. Going blitz. FAU comes with players. White gets rid of it. Thrown incomplete. Receiver fell down, but it was overthrown anyway. It was intended for Yelder. Threw into double, almost triple coverage. Yeah, Lewis did an outstanding job of coming off of his receiver and coming back to the football and had it in his hands right there. Would have been a magnificent catch, but he had an opportunity at it right there. I think this is a big third down if you're FAU right now. Less than two minutes to play. Western Kentucky dominating time of possession here in quarter number three. Have to come up with a stop. They've got seven on the line of scrimmage. They bring five. White reads it, throws, pass, caught at the three yard line by Cameron Eccles Looper. Cover 17. What a great route. Gets the release. Off of press coverage, and then watch his hand turn right back for the football. White knew it. Pitch and catch first down. Going for the six. Penalty flag is thrown. Furby took it in. How about Cameron Eccles Looper tonight? I think this six is offsides against the Owls here. We'll see where the call. Did he get into the end zone? Because I think this is that going is. against. You're right, it is. It's against FAU. Outside. Defense. Number 98. Lined up in the neutral zone. Happiness is to the goal. Repeat first down. Well, that's almost a break for FAU. Yeah, he lined up in the neutral zone. I mean, he, he, there was no, no movement across. But I'll tell you what, that was close to a touchdown after review. Yeah. Call it. Massive changes on both sides right here. Boy, FAU, they've got substitution of one, two, three, four, five, six players. Well, the Hilltoppers did the same thing. Yeah. They brought in five or six players. One and a half to play here in the third. They go to the bunch backfield. Direct snap up over the top. Touchdown. Yelder lines up. They move the quarterback out. Yelder was basically taking the direct snap, and he gets the rushing touchdown. 6'4", 260. How about that for a Wildcat? But how about the push up front? They got a great push, and then he leaps three yards deep into the end zone. And this is an important extra point to put him up by eight. Nuss. Got it. 10 plays, 73 yards, 3 minutes and 55 seconds. A one yard rush by Dion Yelder. Two things. I always go back to what we think at the beginning of a ball game, yeah. Ron. Third downs defensively for Western Kentucky. I thought they had to play well. Defensively on third down, they had. Offensively, they needed to play well on third down, and they've been almost mm -hmm. brilliant doing it. That, to me, is the difference in the game. Well, you look at FAU on third down tonight. They're only 5 of 13. An offense that averages a bunch of yards, only 226 tonight. Western Kentucky, 378 tonight. 
Deion Yelder's first carry of the year, and he gets the touchdown of his career. You think that that? Do you think that wasn't put in this week? Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> I'm going to call Mike Sanford up later. So why don't you tell us this? We weren't ready for that. Now let's see if FAU can answer. They got 118 of the third to do it. White. Up to the 30. 24 yards on the return. You still are very much in the game, Ron. Go, oh, yeah. go, don't, don't go away from what you do. You, you run the football. So you gotta you gotta go out and establish first down, run the football, get back into your flow, and I think they need to get in their rhythm with hurry up. Well, here's some of the defensive plays. They have bottled up Singletary for the most part. It shows that he's rushed for 97 yards, but he's been stopped a lot tonight. But now they go back to work. Singletary trying to bounce to the outside. The pursuit has been outstanding. I like what Singletary bounces right back up, understands his team wants to go quick. He hustles back to get in. I mean, he gets thrown to the ground, and he's right back ready to go right now. Well, Demetrius Kane was one who wrapped him up. They pitch it back to Singletary. They try to go to the short side of the field, but there are five red jerseys surrounding him. Ben Holt, the middle linebacker, did an outstanding job forcing this out, forcing it out. Hey, they've got to convert here. Only five of 13 on third. They need six. Driscoll throws it back for Singletary. Incomplete. They're going to have to punt it away. I'm telling you. This, this is a play design. We've seen it run before where nobody moves. You're trying to get the defense to just stop and quit playing. The play is live. Watch all five of the offensive linemen not move. And Singletary doesn't move. But how about seeing that on film? That is film work on Absolutely. Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday to say, I am not leaving that. Holt makes two great plays on this drive. I agree. Brickle will kick it away from the 19-yard line, and he gets a dandy. Fant has to back up to the 21, and he wisely fair catches it with 15 seconds left to play in the third. I'll tell you, hats off though to Mike Sanford and his entire staff. They, they have. You talked about reevaluating early in the year. Well, I tell you what, you game plan each week, and as the season goes on, those game plans have to get more unique because yeah. everybody has film on you now. Well, he calls his vision the pursuit. There's five pursuit goals he's got. And he's learned a lot in his co coaching career from his time at Stanford, Boise State, Yale, UNLV, Notre Dame. He's got a few championships under his belt as yeah. an assistant. Western Kentucky with more plays than FAU tonight. The run game with Moses. That'll be close to the first down. How about these five pursuit throws? Graduate every player, serve the community, conference title, beat a five, power five team, which will have an opportunity next week, and win a bowl game. That's the way the fourth quarter will come to an end, or third quarter will come to an end. Western Kentucky, 108 yards running the football. Only the fourth time this season they've gone over 100. We head to the fourth. Hilltoppers with an eight-point advantage. As we head to the fourth quarter, teams love celebrating victories, some of them on the field, some of them off. Matty Morris, Western Kentucky, celebrating a victory with one of their coaches, Jeff Dart. Yeah, guys, they're actually wearing these new bracelets. They were given to the team last night. They say family on one side and GDD on the other with the gray breast tumor awareness ribbon because their coach, Jeff Draft, or excuse me, Jeff Dart, he is battling, he had a couple of brain tumors found a couple weeks ago, um, right before the Charlotte game. He was diagnosed, uh, went in right, got them removed, and then he's on the road to recovery right now. So he was supposed to be here tonight. We actually saw him yesterday um, in the football facilities, and he was hoping to make it tonight, but just because of the cold weather, they told him to stay home. But I'm sure he's watching from home. I'll tell you, he, he was 
great to talk to you yesterday, an inspiration to all of us. And coach, we wish you the very, very best in Western Kentucky running out of the ground. And you got to give some kudos to his wife, Jan, and who's a physician's assistant, and Brian Schneider, the trainer of Western Kentucky, who said, listen, you got to get an MRI. Ended now. up being two tumors. Yep. And he wanted to coach. So he said, I'm going to be down the field tomorrow, guys. <laughs> Not tonight. White's pass complete, close to the 45-yard line. The Yelder, a, who's become the main man receiver night tonight. Another great catch. That's outstanding coverage. You can't play the position any better. Right there with him. This a perfectly thrown ball by White. Yelder able to bring it in and the first down. Well, Jeff Dart is the offensive line coach, by the way, and tight end coach Ryan Mahaffey and offensive line GA Harris Biven have taken over for him in his absence and have done a good job getting these old linemen pumped up. Another first down for the Hilltoppers. White looks, sets his feet, looking down the middle into double coverage incomplete. Pass was intended for Sloan. Well, that's a nice job defensively by the Owls. They just took away everything. That was basically throwing that ball away. You can see Mike White, his hands in his, in his hand warmer, and there's good reason for that. Temperature started about 43, 44 degrees, and we've dropped considerably since then. We're down to 40 now, and it feels like 35. Keith says it feels like 15. 28. <laughs> White on second down, rifling over the middle. First down, pass caught. Fan inside the 35. Down to the 30. Boy, you talk about climbing stairs to get that 25-yard reception. Fant did it. Oh, he did. And that, this takes great concentration. You know you're going to get blown up when you go up top, over the middle. And great concentration. Comes down, protects the football. Fant's first catch tonight. How about the fact that Western Kentucky has doubled up first downs, more than doubled up first downs of FAU. 28-13 well, now. They've held the ball for nine more minutes. Yeah. Fan in motion. Look out. White's got a scramble, and he's going to be dropped back at the 44-yard line. Well, that will be a loss of 13 on the play by Hunter Snyder. Now, there's the one you talk about holding it too long. Yeah. yeah. You know, he's done a really nice job of buying time tonight. But this is one he'd been much better off just getting the ball out of his hands, live to play another down. Now, this is a huge loss. Two and a half sacks on the season for Snyder, nine in his career. Now with push, he's got a field goal range, mm -hmm. even though you're kicking with the wind. White looks, three man rush, runs away from it. Throws intercepted at the 30 yard line. Two Herb plays. Miller. In, yeah, two plays in a row. Tried to force the issue. Tried to hold on to it too long on the play before. He's trying to buy time to the outside. He could have dropped it down right here and got four or five yards, but he's trying to get to the outside and get a big play. And good coverage underneath to come back and make the pick. That's what the doctor ordered. This secondary are ball oh, hawks. I'm telling you. That's 14 that, on the season. They they go after you. They've got great ball skills, and, and they'll get in your face. Second interception thrown by White tonight, and now Driscoll and company take over at the 31. Just a quick dump. But White had no place to go. He's going to lose a yard on the play. Uh, this is a well-designed play. Misdirection, trying to get him loose. The blockers out in front just would not give it up. Garner does a great job of coming yeah. in and making an open field tackle. Lost two on the play. Just about three minutes gone by here in the fourth. Marshall has already lost. They are no longer undefeated in conference play. FAU trying to remain undefeated in conference play. Straight up the middle, Singletary. Two yards short of the first down, but he gets to the 40 yeah, after a pickup of 10. And go he's back over to your 100. bread and butter. Go back to your keep feeding. 
Six straight games, over 100 yards rushing for Singletary, and then some. Breaks the tackle. It's a foot race. One man to beat. Gets the block. This is going to be six for Singletary. What a run by Devin Singletary. 60 yards on the scamper. That's his longest touchdown run of the season. I would just got to keep feeding him this outstanding blocking and then watch him break the tackle right here. He breaks two tackles, bounces to the outside, and then uses his blocker. Waits right there, he slows down. You don't see many guys slow down to get a blocker, cuts it back to the inside. Two point conversion. I would be surprised if we don't see them take a timeout oh, right yeah. here. They went 69 yards, only took them third three plays, 60 of those coming from Singletary. He's got 171 yards rushing now, and they're going to go for two. Driscoll puts two wide receivers wide left. Caleb Woods, bottom of your screen, Singletary in the backfield with him. They look for Woods, and they got him! His Good first RPO. catch of the year, Keith, and it goes for a two-point conversion. Well, that's a great RPO, great time to run it. Singletary's been gashing you. Everybody comes up thinking the ball's going into Singletary's hands. The Driscoll just pulls it out, lays it open to a wide open receiver. We couldn't ask for much more. 28-28 here in the fourth quarter. Devin Singletary 20 yards away from 1,000 yards rushing this season. He ties him up at 28 with a 60-yard scamper. For breaking sports news, in-progress highlights, the best viral videos, and expert opinions from around the day's biggest headlines, join us daily for the rally at 6 p.m., 11 p.m., and 1 a.m. only on WatchStadium.com. I'm Keith Moreland, Matty Morris, I'm Ron Poole, and we got a dandy. Western Kentucky doing a great job offensively and defensively. FAU's deep offense kind of asleep there for a while and then bang. Uh, they bang, but the their defense came up with the picks when they needed the turnovers. Two interceptions tonight for this FAU defense. Echoes Looper. Gets up to the 20 yard line and that's it. Great coverage. Yeah, yes. offensively, if you're Western Kentucky, you got to get rhythm again. You've been almost protective yeah. of a lead. Now you got to get in that aggressive mode where you got to step on the gas. You know, we used to call that going turtle. You yep. can't go turtle. You can't put your head in the shell when you're playing a team as powerful as FAU. You got to keep pushing offensively. I mean, you don't want to do anything like ridiculous, but. Yeah, get your RPOs back going yeah. and, and put the ball in your hands of your senior quarterback. And the numbers on him, a couple of touchdowns, but a couple of picks tonight. Simple handoff. Irving maybe gets a yard. Wouldn't be surprised to see some kind of double combination route, some rub routes, get something dragging across the middle. Uh, we haven't seen a lot of that tonight, but that is the style they like to go to where you can just drop the ball down. Once again, Western Kentucky has given FAU possession inside the red zone twice. FAU's taken advantage of those both times. White goes back, ball tipped up in the air, incomplete. And we were talking to, to Lane Kiffin about that, and I said, you know, watching you the two games we've had, you guys have a lot of tip footballs. Now they <laughs> they put pressure, and that was because of pressure, and White had to try to step up, release it before he wanted to. This is a gigantic play for the Hilltoppers. Yeah. I think Aziz El Shair thought he had the interception. Yes, he did. Which would have been only his second of his career. Third down and nine. They're coming. Here they come with five. White steps up in as he throws incomplete. White took a shot, never went to the ground, but he felt the pressure. Good defensive stand by FAU. I believe that's 
the first three and out of the second half, and it comes at a great time. Yeah, good point. For FAU. They'll be putting with the wind, and it's still blowing pretty good here inside the stadium. Jake Collins, 2017 preseason All-Conference USA. Well, they're loading the top of the screen up there, the right hand side of the punter, who likes to roll punt. Jalen Young back at the 40. Young feels it at the 39, sits down at the 37. Plenty of time left, 10-18. We come back, FAU will have the football. We are tied at 28. Tied at 28-10-18 to play in the ball game. Next Saturday on Facebook, we have more Conference USA action. The Mean Green of North Texas, who are currently leading ODU in tonight's game, visit Louisiana Tech Bulldogs, who already won today. That'll be next Saturday at 3.30 Eastern time, and you can catch the matchup only on Facebook. I'll tell you, the fans, he's got the warmest seat in the house, the, the mascot, you know, Big Red? Oh, he does. He, 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 he's moving around, and he's got some padding in there. Good field position for FAU. When in doubt, give it to Singletary. It's Down to the 45-yard line. That'll be a pickup of 15. He's five yards away from 1,000. Boy, this, this offensive line's taking control of this fourth quarter. Boy, they really have. This is what we thought would happen earlier. Singletary will get about three on the play. Because the fact that this FAU team, they run a lot of plays. Right now, it's 75 to 64 in favor of Western Kentucky. FAU averages 76 plays a game. Give it again to Singletary. Kicks to the outside. He goes over 1,000, but maybe not because the flag comes in. Usually that's going to be a hold, and Buddy Howe will come in. Singletary will probably go out for FAU as they back up. This was away from the ball, Ron. That's what, what kills you sometimes. Holding. Offense. Number 64. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Second down. So many times the running back is by you and to the other side. And then you see him right out in front right there. You see you've got a hold of him, but the, the takes him to the ground. I gotta get your hand, you get your hands outside, yeah. you're gonna get called on a regular basis. All the time. Well, his jersey's not covering the pads either. So that backs it up to about the 49-yard line. Second down and 15. Driscoll throws wide open to Willie Wright. And he will score. 49 yards for Willie Wright. What a great read from Driscoll. Great play call. You've been running, running, running. Put it in the belly of your running back. It's another RPO right there. Pull it out. Bring the safety up. And then slip, slide your guy right behind him. Pitch and catch. And the lead. Now Willie Wright with his third touchdown reception of the year. It goes for 49 yards. And just like that with 9-11 to play in the ballgame, FAU's got the advantage. And the extra point is good by Joseph. Willie Wright, the freshman, they call him intelligent. The case coaches say he's passionate, he acts like a vet. Now he acts like he just scored on a 49-yard reception for a touchdown. Head coach Lane Kiffin saying we got to get better at the passing game. Well, it got a little better at least on that play. 35 to 28 as Driscoll throws the touchdown, the fourth of the year for him. Next Saturday at 7 o'clock Eastern on Stadium. We head to Miami to see the Panthers of FA, FIU host UTSA. You can watch the game on stadium.com, on Twitter at Watch Stadium, or just go ahead and download the stadium app in the App Store. More Conference USA action next Saturday 
7 o'clock Eastern, only on Stadium. FIU already beating Marshall tonight. And it'll be another showdown next week. Sloan will take it at the seven yard line. And he is surrounded right after he crosses the 20. It takes a couple of big hits. Well, I'll tell you what, the coverage the entire ball game on kickoffs by the Owls has been outstanding. You're not even getting back to the 25 yeah. yard line. That's an outstanding job. I don't think you change anything for Western Kentucky, but you know, you talked about having the turtle. Right. You know, they, they haven't been able to get back into that flow and that speed game. They're going to have to bring it back now. They're going to have to get going agree. and get some rhythm. But I go back to the first half where the final six plus minutes, this Western Kentucky team scored 14 points. They've got the DNA to do it. White again, a nice fake, tries to thread the needle, and that was a dangerous pass. They had a bunch of white jerseys there. You can pick whoever you want who almost picked that off. McCarthy came back, number yeah. 13. He, he really did a nice job of seeing this. Watch him come back in and have a shot at it. Excuse me, it's three and not 13. That was Lewis. He well, had I, it. I'll tell you what, that was, you, you can't be threading the needle like that. Second down and 10 from the 23. White pass tipped up in the air. Incomplete. Again, we talked about how many tip balls this defense gets. That'll bring up a third down situation. And Sloan didn't secure it before it got in on his helmet. White put a lot of mustard on this ball. Oh, he did, didn't he? It got in on him through the hands. Three and out the last possession. Chance to go three and out again here right here. Boy, the FAU sideline is excited to say the least. Fant goes in motion. White looking across the middle, nothing there. Pulls it down, throws, incomplete. With 8.42 to play, Sloan was the intended receiver. You know, you look at this scenario, the receiver's right at the top. Now, he had to go away from it, made a double move. He's open, but the, the pressure forced him to his non-throwing hand. He's got no chance to look back and see. Yeah, that was Jernigan. And again, Western Kentucky, though, both teams with three timeouts left, plenty of time, have to kick it away. Solomon calls the fair catch immediately, juggles it, gets it back. I'll tell you, again, FAU's got outstanding field position. Uh, this is, they've got into their tempo. They were going quick. They want to run some clock now. Now, they'll take points, no doubt, of any kind. But this is when you might see them get a little more methodical right here, see if they can get ahead of the chains. They withstood so much in oh, the yeah. end of that second quarter and with the Hilltoppers having the football it seemed like all of the third quarter here in the fourth quarter it's really changed. Now let's see if we just get doses of Singletary and doses of Singletary. Singletary already over a thousand yards for this season. His last carry he clips that mark and he wants to add to it outside of foot race again single Terry goes over 200 yards rushing the best this season uh, he's just this offensive line is just dominating right now up front he's getting to the second level untouched give it to him again you notice that little bounce step that he's got kind of Barry Sanders ish at times Great patience, though, running the football. Yeah, but when he gets north-south, that's when he does his damage. Now, that was good defense. Just yeah. bottled him up and gave him nowhere to go. Singletary tonight, 212 yards rushing, 
three touchdowns. Another yeoman's work by him. Play clock at 10, a lot of time. The blitz. Driscoll, though, has plenty of time. Flushed out of the pocket, looking for Woods. Incomplete. Well, there's a lot of hand checking right Boy, there. Boy, there was. There was a whole lot. You know, you get out there like that, out on an island, that's the end of this play. Is I believe that was Johnson up with him, number one, out on the outside. There's a lot. <laughs> There's a lot of checking going back and forth. A little hand to hand there. Yeah. Brings up third down and 11. They're only six of 15 on third down. Briscoe, the deep out, has the man off the shoulder pads of Willie Wright. He was open. Oh, yeah. That's one of those times where Driscoll is just learning. And you, Coach Kippen told you, he's talking about this is where still got some improvement. Got to get this ball delivered. He tried to put too much on a line right there. You got to put just a little air on those, those deep outs and came up just a little short. Well, Fant standing back at his 10, and it's going to be a fake. A lot of running room, needs one more block. Got it, first down, FAU. What a gutty play by Ryan Rickle. Roll punt, and the first thing you tell your punter when you're rolling, if they don't force you, put it down. Yeah. And there was nobody there to forcing. Great blocking out in front. And then watching finish right here. He wasn't going out of bounds. Well, Corey Batum, the special teams coach, they work on this, but the wall set up for him. And Rickle goes, I'll take the hit. I'll get that extra five yards, and he did. That's just a great play. Great recognition right there. 7-11 to play in the ball game. Singletary inside the 15 to the 13. Continuing Nothing. to add to his total. Nothing more demoralizing oh. to a defense. To get a stop, come off the field, and then the special teams, which has really cost the Hilltoppers tonight. Singletary will be bottled up. He's able to pick up a couple on the play. That'll put him up at about 220 yards running tonight. 257, by the way, is his career high for a game. It's third down and short. Give it back to him again. He got the first. Down to the eight. You know, you, this, this FAU, and he's got a little hobble there going. Oh, he's, this, he's got a lot of carries. How about his footwork, though? He oh. just basically stopped and changed directions all in the same motion right there. 31 carries in the ball game. Bertram is down, and a timeout's going to be called. Bertram just on one knee. He's trying to stretch out that left leg. Here's a little bit of Singletary again. Stop, start. See that right mm. foot hit the ground. He moved over about three yards and then up up there to get the first down, make it first and goal. Well, I think Baby Bush may be a good description of him once again tonight. He's gone over 1,000 yards for the season. He has his sixth straight game of 100 yards rushing or more. He's broken the FAU record for touchdowns in a career set by Alfred Morris tonight. Besides that, Devin Singletary hasn't done anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, My goodness. He, he hadn't done anything. He's He's been outstanding. One of the things that you got to give some credit to is those five guys up front. They really didn't control the game in the first part of the game, but here in the second half, especially yeah. in this fourth quarter, those guys have given him lots and lots of room. Florida Atlantic, five better than 500 for the first time at this point of the season since 2008, playing in the school's 200th game and the lane train continues to roll. How about 165 points in the last three games? And it'll be first and goal from the nine yard line. Direct snap. And it will be. 
down to the five yard line. You know, I, 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 we've been watching Singletary. This is our third game we've had with him. And you go, there's no, nothing there. And then he gets four. Yeah, he just does a nice job of using the guys in front. He finds that soft spot. There are guys that just feel the soft spot of the defense. And he's the kind of player that does not want to come out. Singletary looks for Painter again. Touchdown. Devin Singletary is fourth rushing touchdown tonight. Great runners have patience, power, speed, and vision. He showed all of that tonight. See the patience right here as he just waits, sees it, and then there it is. And then explosion into the end zone. Second time this season, Devin Singletary has had four rushing touchdowns. Driscoll had four, also versus ODU. The extra point is good, and the lead goes to 14 with 521 to play. Devin Singletary, 232 yards rushing on 34 carries, four touchdowns. The main reason FAU leads. The man in the hat is Jim Slowiak. He was a Boca Raton fireman for 33 years. He wears the hats with the FAU logo on it. He doesn't miss a game, and what he has seen is Devin Singletary running for 155 yards in the second half and also for four touchdowns for the game. So, Jim, the trip back to Boca is going to be long. It'll be warmer there, but it'll be yes, a it big will. smile on your face <laughs> because your team's winning again. By the way, thank you for your service of Absolutely. over 30 years. So he made Jim a star now. You think he'd let me, when we go back to Boca, Where's the, the wear shoot? the hat? No, I want to get on one of the fire trucks. Okay. Jim, I made you a star, buddy. Put me on a fire truck in Boca. <laughs> It'll be a short kick to Sloan at the two. Hit at the 17. Well, they have had outstanding kick coverage, mm -hmm. especially here in the second half. You've got to go 85 yards. You got a 15% chance yeah. to score. If you take over at the 40, you got a 40% exactly. chance to score. You know what I like though? During that timeout, the coaches got the entire FAU team on the sideline, and the enthusiasm was unbelievable. And I've been covering these guys for a lot of years. I've never seen that. Uh, Not at this time of the year. No, and, and the other part about that is this is a team that, that looked like in the third quarter its day was over. They were down 28 to 20. Western Kentucky was all they were doing was holding the football away from them. Yeah. Well, Western Kentucky still has 515 to play. This game is not over, and White just has to throw it into the dirt. Well, they're pinning their ears back now. Yeah. They're, just, they're, they're, just, they're rushing just four, and they're getting pressure. White hasn't had very long to have anything set up. They may have to try to move the pocket a little bit and try to get him out on the edge a little bit. Second and 10. They back off the press coverage. They give White a little bit of room. He throws the out. It is complete to Sloan. And he'll have the first down close to the 30-yard line at the 29-yard line. Sloan makes his fourth catch of the year. Covers 12 yards. Uh, it doesn't do anything. It just slows the clock down a little bit just for a second. It's back to running now. But you're going to have to stay underneath. They've got two deep safeties in this Tampa, too. And they're not getting anything over the top. Check that Sloan's fourth catch of the game, not of the year. He's got 10 for the year. White looking, plenty of time. A little safety valve to DeAndre Furby. Only good for a three-yard gain. Aziz El Shair on the coverage. Missed some time because of injury, and the team mentally missed him along with Oh, yeah, missed they, you miss a guy like that. He, oh, yeah. He's that leader. Team motivator, number one in Conference USA and tackles per game, Aziz El Shair. White, look out. Again, 
They're not giving him anything but these little short dings, and he does get the first down, Kirby. Well, you got to take them. I mean, it, yeah. it, at this point, you just got to, you know, move the chains, get the first down, and, you know, if it takes you a while to score, then onside kick and use your timeout. See, but you're not going to get anything vertical right now. Yeah, we're inside of four to play in the ball game. And they'll just keep feeding the well. That is Mike, Mike Quan Dean, his fifth catch of the season. And he picks up nine and just chip away. Clock go rolling, becoming a factor for Western Kentucky. White again. Basically the same part of the field. This time to Furby again, he picks up eight. And you, you, you drag you drag a couple of guys, and that's exactly what we're doing, and send two guys vertical. The two guys vertical have got double coverage on both sides. Ten receivers have caught passes tonight for Western Kentucky. Now they go a three wide receiver set top of your screen. <laughs> Four-man rush, White just throws it underneath, pass caught by Baker, gets away, takes a hit as he gets to the 30-yard line, but another first down with 2.53 to play in the ballgame. You know, having patience. I, I, I like what White's doing right here. Hey, it's going to take us, we've got to score twice, but you got to finish this right now. Now, now you get yeah. in, in a spot where... The, the, the back defense, the two deep safeties, won't be falling back as far. You might get something into one of the corners of the end zone. Well, he picked up 14 on the play. Two and a half left in the ball game. White looking for Pater, throwing it up for grabs, incomplete. Sheldon Lewis looked like he had a beat on it, going for another interception because Lane was about three steps behind him. Ron, quarterbacks get impatient as well. Yeah. And that's an impatient throw right there. He said, I need to get it right now. It, it, you look for it, but if it's not there, you still got to check it down. Second and 10. Heck, they want to talk, they want to talk about it because it, it's time now. You got to close your coverage a little bit. Mm -hmm. And instead of playing, it's, you know, I hate to say it, I think prevent, prevents you from right. running. <laughs> uh, I agree. So, it, but right now you got to close down, maybe go back to a little press, and maybe even try to heat up White a little bit. But you've been able to, to force him, not let him be comfortable in the pocket. Meanwhile, Mike Sanford talking to his offensive coordinator, Junior Adams. Hey, they've done a nice job offensively tonight. Western Kentucky, 466 total yards, 430 for FAU. The difference is on the ground. There you go. You look at the rushing yards, 102 yards rushing for Western Kentucky. 377 for FAU. But again, I go back for Lane Kiffin saying, people are going to figure out our run game one of these times. We've still got to get better in the passing game. And presses coverage down there. Here they come. Mike White looks, throws deep. Well overthrown, intended for Jernigan. I really like I really like what they did defensively. Cook the timeout and say, all right, guys, we're getting away from this. Exactly. We're going back to what we, we've done here in the second half. And come after the quarterback, man up everywhere, free safety in the backside. Third down. White looks, throws it, threads the needle over the middle, caught by Dean, his second catch tonight. Short of the first down, that'll bring up a fourth down and about three. Uh, there's the ball game. Any opportunity, yeah. it's right here. Dean, the junior out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. But this will be the ball game. White looks. Scrambling, Trace from behind, and he will go down. McCarthy with a great play. He didn't bite on the pass, fake to the outside. Great closing speed. I tell you, it's a big win for Lane Kiffin and this university oh, yeah. to come in to Bowling Green, two-time defending Conference USA champions, and come away with a victory. Well, they scratched and they clawed 
when things weren't going all that well for him. And the job that Lane Kiffin has done, the Lane train continues to roll. And I think he's done everything that FAU has asked him to do. Now here are the remaining schedules. Of course, FAU next week, they go to Marshall. Marshall losing to FIU today, Western Kentucky. They will play just about 45 minutes an hour down the road at Vanderbilt. Then they've got to play Marshall. Singletary on the carry. Singletary picks up eight more. And Marshall, I tell you what, they still have to come. They still have to play Western Kentucky. They have to go to San Antonio to play UTEP. They end up Southern Miss. I'm telling you, the, the East. <laughs> oh, I, I know. Throw it up for grabs, kids. I'm going to throw in Florida International there at the bottom. Oh, yeah. They get to play both of these clubs as well, and they had a big win today. So all of a sudden, I agree. It, it, you know, if they run the table, they can put themselves in position. You know, we talked about it earlier. We will have the Shula Bowl between FAU FIU coming up in just a couple of weeks, and there may be an awful lot on the line in that game. Single Terry dances around. Gets up to the 38-yard line. Well, I think you'll see victory formation here. Right? Down two touchdowns, inside 50 minutes. They'll let the clock run. I, I don't think they have to snap it, but one more time. 244 yards rushing now for Devin Singletary. He comes out of the game right now. Boy, yeah. he, he, he deserves 13 to away. this ball game. That's a big night. <clears throat> 13 yards away from a career high, and he gets a well-deserved hug from the coaching staff. Final 22 seconds. Once again, join us next week, 7 o'clock Eastern time. Well, that's when you'll learn as a quarterback right there. Lane Kiffin's looking at him going, hey, look. <laughs> you know, you're at this point. Make sure you snap it before the 40-second yeah. clock goes off and the ball game's over because you got to snap it one more time. Now coming up next, inside the league, we'll be joining it in progress the second this game is over. And Buddy Howe ends it on a run over the 50 down to the 49 yard line. He picks up 20 and they just keep adding to their total. I'll tell you this FAU team, they are They've got so many different weapons. Uh, that, I, I like the fact of what they can do. And then I thought the adjustments they made defensively, Ron, it, 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 at the end of that third quarter, into the fourth quarter, is another part of that, too. You, you yep. talk about the rushing the football because they were outstanding at that. But I thought their defense made some good adjustments late in that third quarter, into the fourth quarter, and separated this game. Well, Lane Kiffin gets the win. And it was an impressive win at that. Led by Devin Singletary, they go to five and three out of the year. They keep their record perfect, four and zero in conference play. Western Kentucky has their four-game winning streak. It is snapped. Capato once again. FAU wins it, 42-28. For Keith Moreland, Matty Morris, and our entire crew in Bowling Green, Kentucky. I'm Rob Doolin. You have been watching Conference USA Football on. Stadium.